I think I need to ask you too. Your Cody Fui, your F W E E. Yeah. There has to be a story behind that. And like all all usernames, it's not a good one. Well, sorry, I don't mean like it's bad. I just mean it's not interesting. <laughs> Um, but yes, I've been Cody Fui since uh, the before the age of mankind. Um, and actually, when I uh, shout out to uh, Jay Zubricki, uh, audio engineer at GCR, he's a good friend of mine. Um, he always makes up even more fun nicknames based on nicknames, and he calls me uh, Fweedum. Um, and he says, let Fweedum ring, and that makes me crack up every time. <laughs> <laughs> If I ever got a tattoo, it would be let freedom ring and it'd be tattooed right on my forehead. <laughs> uh, but I'm too afraid to get a tattoo. All right. I haven't decided if I never want a tattoo or not. I came really close to, uh, we found some tool that translates into Gallifreyan, which is like the Doctor Who language. I'm thinking about getting like daughter's name or initials or something in Gallifreyan somewhere, like on the arm or. Small back or something. Like or something. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think at one point I'm going to just make a whole just identity change. I'm going to dye my hair blonde. And I'm going <laughs> to get a nose ring. And that, that time might be coming sooner rather than later too. So I feel like um, if you go blonde, you got to go like the 80s like hair metal band. Like style of blonde like you just got to go long blonde oh hair. long uh so you know you're speaking to like the 13 year old of me when i started playing guitar and was listening to like van halen i want to get a perm but i i will never no not doing that my hair was my, i've i've had my hair down here before and i hated it um i'm a picky guy you know what i i just shaved today i know this isn't we were supposed to be coding but you know what i just shaved today because i was getting my like beard in my my mouth that's the worst. Uh, there is the nothing trim. worse. Like, you, just, you, just, you just cut it. Yeah, see, I'm all or nothing, apparently. Because I just... <laughs> I mean, this, this is me shaved, so it really it's not that bad. But um, it's like the same thing with the hair. As soon as it... As soon as it gets to the point where, like, it starts, like, irritating my, my face, uh, I'm like, nope. Gotta cut it. Yeah. This is too long for me. I need to cut. I need to shave my head. Gotcha. Yeah, I grew my hair out long once as well, uh, but I have curly and wavy hair, so I actually have closer to oh. an afro. Yeah, so <laughs> there oh, was nothing in sick. high school that I could do to style my hair. <laughs> it was just a yeah. wild mess. That that sounds like something. Yeah, I mean, I want to get a perm at one point. So you don't? I'm done. No, <laughs> I know I don't. I know I don't. Know I don't. <laughs> that was that was me at thirteen when I was very impressionable and I was watching videos of hair metal bands, and it was. Uh, bad and i'm glad i got out of it before i did <laughs> i mean i guess i tried it once i tried the long hair once totally fine but all right let's kick it off yeah let's kick it off all right welcome to the show everybody um we're gonna write some code today um and hang out we were just we're i'm in like a hangout mood right now so if we write code that's gonna be a good thing uh but I'm I'm in a good you know it's like 80 degrees right now I'm in Buffalo New York, um, it's about to there's going to be a crazy storm where then it's going to immediately hit back down to like 50 and it might snow tomorrow, so you know I'm just living life to the fullest right now. I feel like you have the storms I got because I was under tornado watch last night for five hours. Uh, it was 80 yesterday, had the storm and and everything last night, and now it's 50 today, and like. So it's like literally everything you just said. It's like you're a day behind me. <laughs> like anything weather exactly related. Exactly. What's going on? <laughs> Which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. So what? This is uh, week two. I just wanted to call out. Like we do have our Twitter handles down below us. Uh, if you want to follow us, reach out, talk to yeah. us on Twitter. Have questions. Happy to happy to have that. Um, but with that, we want to jump into the problem we're solving today. And you and your fancy coffee. Yes. Yeah, I mean, ice latte because 80 degrees. Yeah, so um, so today, I think we were looking for some fun things to do. And you know what's really fun are the advent of code problems. Um, and unfortunately, this year, I only got to like two or three of them. 
Um, I know I had some friends that did most of them, but so I was like, Hey, let's, let's look at some of those. And, uh, this one seemed pretty fun just by the due nature of the problem. Uh, so th I think this is day two. I mean, we, oh, you got yeah. it up. Yeah, it is day two. Okay. I'm not crazy. Uh, I should probably look at the screen. Day two of but, last year, 2022. Yes. Um, so this would be fun. Um, I know a lot of people like competing these this is going to be us just having fun trying to solve it and play around with the problem but it's rock paper scissors uh we're, we're basically going to be scoring a rock paper scissors game uh, from the looks of it but um yeah we can read through the problem um i know it's kind of long but i think the story's kind of fun though so i don't mind reading it for a little story time yeah the elves began to set up camp on a bed on a beach to decide whose tent gets to be closest to the snack storage, a giant rock-paper-scissors tournament is already in progress. Rock-paper-scissors is a game between two players. Each game contains many rounds. In each round, the player each simultaneously chooses one of rock, paper, or scissors using a hand shape. Then, a winner for that round is selected. Rock defeats scissors. Scissors defeats paper, and paper defeats rock. We know this game. Uh, if both players choose the same shape, the round instead ends in a draw. So appreciative of the help yesterday from the problem that we don't have context on, uh, one elf gives you an encrypted strategy guide. Um, that, they say, will be sure to help you win. The first column, column on the left, is what your opponent is going to play. A for rock, B for paper, and C for scissors. The second column, suddenly the elf is called away to help with someone's tent. Um, the second column, you reason, must be what you should play in response X for rock, Y for paper, and Z for scissors. Winning every time would be suspicious. So the so the responses must have been chosen or carefully chosen. The winner of the whole tournament is the player with the highest score. Your total score is the sum of your scores for each round. The score for a single round is the score for the shape you selected. One for rock, two for paper, and three for scissors. Plus the score for the outcome of the round. Zero if you lost. Three if the round was a draw, and six if you've won. Since you can't be sure if the elf is trying to help you or trick you, you should calculate the score you would get if you were to follow the strategy guide. For example, suppose you were given the following strategy guide, so A, Y, B, X, C, Z. This strategy guide predicts and recommends the following. First round, your, opponent's, your opponent will choose rock A, and you should choose paper Y. This ends in a win for you with a score of eight. Two because you chose paper, plus six because you've won. Oh, there's double scoring. Interesting. Uh, in the second round, your opponent will choose paper, B, and you should choose rock, X. Uh, this ends in a loss for you with a score of one plus zero. The third round is a draw with both players choosing scissors, giving you a score of three plus three equals six. Um, and in this example, if we were to follow the strategy guide, you would get a total score of 15. Eight plus one plus six. So what will your total score be if everything goes exactly according to your strategy guide? All right. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah. It sounds like a lengthy problem. Maybe you want to start breaking it down in the discovery, the discovery tree? Yes. Um, and I think what's what, so the one way that I like to work backwards too from this problem, because I mean, at advent of code, there is the constraint where basically you have to solve a problem, but then they're going to give you, um, an input that's usually way too big to do by hand. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes just look, cause even reading this, I, I like as the input, the strategy guide, I, th I think it is. Um, but I, um, so if you if you go back to Advent of Code for a sec, sure. and um, if you're signed into GitHub, if you click the GitHub link, it should just sign you in immediately. I don't know if it's gonna. It, it did it for me. Uh, I don't think I want to do that. Okay, that's fine. Well, I have it, and it is the strategy guide, so um, I can. Once we get back into the into Code Land, I can paste it. But I have an example of the input. So the input is the strategy guide. So maybe we start off with that in the discovery tree. Yeah, so take in strategy guide. Yep. Let's input time. Uh, 
this probably means let's return a hard coded score. Yeah. And then I want to put some like some just um definition stuff over here too. So like kind of a, a domain map, as you will. So strategy guide has two columns. Um left column opponents they can't spell column and the right column is our column yeah our response yep okay and then the way we score is there's two things that matter um So actually, we're we'll, we'll going to score. So it seems like the scoring. Oh yeah, sorry, I'm going up the screen here. Um, no, the scoring is um, based on what um, choice. So rock equals one. So uh, actually, is rock, is rock equal to one? I think so. Rock is one, paper two, scissors three. Oh, scissors is three. Okay. Paper two. Yeah, and then it's what outcome is. Yep. Thumbed around. And they said this is a win equals six, lose equals zero, and draw is equal to three, right? Yep. Okay, awesome. cool. So that is basically the, I would say, the domain of what we're solving right now. So maybe the first thing is if we just, why don't we just bring this up to the uh, the discovery tree as well and I'll... Yeah. yeah, yeah, we can do no. that and then we can break out what we want from it. Sure. I think that's a good idea. I will copy it at least in that way. Yeah, we can slice it. Yeah. So maybe the first the first part of score is to just score based on choice. Love that, yeah. yeah. On choice. I cannot spell this morning. Yep. We're based only on choice. And then then we want to score on outcome. And it's choice for both players. So if both players choose scissors, for example, it's three plus three, six. Um, for for choice. Well, yeah, that would equal a draw. No, so it would be. Oh, we want to score. For, so we're returning a score for both players. Or are we just going to? I thought we we're just doing a score for ourselves. No, well, it's um. Actually, yeah, I think you're right. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. This is always the fun thing. That's why we talk through it and we make sure we're we understand. If you're yeah. doing it in a vacuum, we may uh maybe doing it wrong. All right, I'm reading the example they're giving. Um the first round your opponent will choose rock A and you should choose paper Y. This ends in a win for you with a score of eight, two because you chose paper, plus six because you won. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Yeah, so it's just your score. So your I imagine score. this Thank you. I imagine our first look will be, well, we played paper, so we get two, and our score will become two. And then, then we'll actually evaluate, we played paper, they played this. What is our is our win, loss, draw? I'm going to say your <laughs> score, too, just so I don't get confused there. But yes, love it. Um, and honestly, I think this is good enough for us to just jump into if we want. And then we can figure out what's what's remaining after. Yeah. So do we just want to take the, the simple case? Just uh... I, Yeah. You got those three things. I think I think we could, we could go. So what? How do we? Probably myself last. So I think an, another interesting avenue we could go is um, by doing the cho the choice ma by doing this choice of taking going for the entire strategy guide as input and then doing it is sort of an outside in um, level of development where we're basically starting right from the the u in this case like the u user interface level which is going to be a file. Um, 
Another way we could, it could be interesting is starting actually just with one of the scoring things is like us test driving a tiny piece of the solution that we know we need. And then we can figure out how to wire it up later. I'm, I'm fine either way. Just wanted to call that out. Could be interesting as it'd be different than last that time we coded. Yeah, it's interesting that we find, uh, I mean, I think in the TDD world, right, that's London versus Chicago style testing is kind of the nomenclature that they've given us. Sort of. I think that it's kind of um, sort of related, but I also see just some people gravitate towards one form of that TDD style of outside in, starting from the user interface, going in or going inside out, starting with a small box, a small focused piece of the problem, and then carving their way out back to the user interface. Mm -hmm. um, but even if we don't do you anything, I think it was worth calling it out. Yeah. We can start to the bottom level. I'm good with that experiment. Let's let's try that experiment. We'll and we'll just what we can do to keep it so we still get to where we're at the user interface level, so that we're kind of delivering value. Um, so we're thinking this. We'll do that, and then we'll go up. Yeah. All right. So we should be here. Do you see WebStorm? Yep, I do. Awesome. I'll do a quick check, make sure we're all green and we can run tests. Look at that, test pass. So our default TypeScript, just making sure we have a test and a, and a function to make sure we can link the two up. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're good to go. What's our first test? Yeah, let's do it. So the first test, um... Rock was one, so why don't we just say um, it uh, returns score for choosing rock? It returns one for choosing rock. Yep. And so, what does this look like? Because so round, we just want a round. It really is a score for the round. You want to introduce some kind of yeah, I like that idea. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Round dot so you know. a new round. Okay, we'll start there. We're already in failing, I think, just by doing that. So, um, and we want to say score. And we want to equal it one. So the only thing here too is how do we know we've chosen rock? But I think that's okay. We can. So let's create class round. Thank you, WebStorm. Yep. And I'm going to move it over and export so that we can kind of keep our production code over there. And then it says we don't have a score method. So there's a score. And I know we want to return a number. I'm going to go ahead and say return zero to get it to compile. And I want to run to see that test fail. Hey, look, one does not equal zero. And now that we know we're, we're off into the races, I'm going to delete our kind of template code. Okay. <clears throat> Clean up import. And you have a failing test, sir. Okay. Yeah, and I was going to say, I think um, maybe since we... we the, I would say this is a little more closer to the user interface layer, but since we're kind of going down this road anyway, I feel like it would make more sense getting to one's a bigger step than if we just consider this a sort of draw, right? Oh, I guess you still get a point for the draw based on your choice. So this is the lowest level tier. Um, so this this would be a round that was a draw where we chose rock. Uh, and that's the lowest score that you could get for a round. Um, okay. So then we need this to pass. I mean, we could just... Yeah, simple as possible would just be, hey, let's just hard code yep. the one. Um, <clears throat> okay. Yeah. And I think that's that? probably a good commit point. Yeah. Yeah. So. The, uh, actually, the lowest score is if you play rock and you lose, because that's one plus zero. So I'll actually give you a score of one. So this is us playing rock and losing. For some reason, I think the, the, the tie is zero just from the my brain. Um, 
but you're right losing yeah. is zero i actually get I've been big into chess. And so drawing, you get a half a point when you draw in a chess tournament. And so to me, it's always, you get, yeah, chess is really interesting. You get one if you win, a half, you each get a half a point if you draw, and then you get zero if you lose. So I'm used to draw getting partial points, I guess. Six and three and zero feel like an odd breakdown, but it's okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then the next step would be, I guess what 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 should be the next test? Like we could just do the same, but for paper. Paper, yeah, would be two. Yeah, we could. Yeah. That's the right. interesting thing here is we have we haven't really denoted that we are choosing rock in the first test as well, so we may need to think about what that looks like. Mm-hmm. And to be fair, we haven't had a reason to until right now because we can't have the same, you know, round. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we have no we have no input to do an if on, so there's no way for us to do any kind of really simple if statement for what our normal triangulation looks like. So I feel like that means we want to at least put in something this simple. Do we want to use the symbol from the? the actual strategy guide or do we want to just like make our own thing? It doesn't matter to like me. We can always add that in later. Oh, so you're talking like A or X? Because there's actually it's two X. symbols, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, the right side is different. So I think X is rock. Y is scissors. Or Y is paper, sorry. X. So that's going to give us a TypeScript error. And I guess I have to be there. Yeah, let's create constructor. And this is um, our input. I, to, I was gonna say our input. Yeah, our play. Our yeah, and, I like that. Okay, that's a little better. Yeah. Okay. And it is going to be a string, and we're gonna go ahead and just say private because there's nothing here. And so, what is what is paper? I think it's Y. Let's go with Y for now. We can always change it if I'm. Incorrect. Looking at yeah. Monitor. This immediately makes me want to uh, make an enum so that we can. Yes, I think let's start small and maybe that's a nice refactoring step. We can go right after this. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm going to rename default here to be uh, rock paper scissors. Rocket, rocket paper scissors. Apparently. Rocket should always win. <laughs> It'd be really fun to take this to the next level and do add lizard and Spock to it because that's the what the Big Bang Theory did. <laughs> nice. All right, so to te- pass this test as simple as possible, if this dot our play is equal to y, I want to return two. Love it. Yep. And this feels very. Oh, I need to do triple equals. That's actually interesting that it allowed allowed you to do a assignment in the if statement. That's you learn something new every day. All right, that is our simplest possible. We are green. What do we feel like we want to refactor while I commit this? So I think, um, honestly, I already think at this point we're going to get confused what X and Y are. So why don't we immediately uh, go towards um, the refactor? I agree. And if we want to, if we're saying our play, I think we've already came up with the enum name play. Um, I don't know what else you would call it. Maybe from the it's a turn, answer. it's a play. Yeah, yeah. How do we? I think that's what Advent of Code called it, right? If your opponent plays rock, they do say using a hand shape. We could say hand shape. That's a weird way of saying. It, but that's the way they're saying it. They say. Rock, paper, scissors is a game between two players. Each game contains many rounds. That's why we got rounds in there. The players each simultaneously choose one of rock, paper, or scissors using a hand shape. Then a winner for that round is selected. If the players choose the same shape, the round instead ends in a draw. So I think shape or hand shape. I think hand doesn't really matter, so maybe shape, which feels weird, but I think it's the language they're using in the the dialogue, so we could try it. Because then it'd be like shape dot paper is what we'd say, and I, actually I think that would be, it wouldn't be terrible. Yeah. All right. Do you want to type or you want me to? 
Oh yeah, I can do it. Um, so let's just start off with just adding it. So export enum shape. And the interesting thing is, is we're having this encoding shape, and there's two, there's two numbers or letters for the same shape. Right. So we have rock is equal to A or X. <clears throat> yes, and I think that only matters. Actually, I have no idea why that matters. And we, the nice thing is, since we're building this incrementally, we don't have to. Well, you know, maybe that'll impact our design, but right now it's not going to because we're factoring what we got. Um, and we only have rock and paper. Um, okay, cool. So shape, rock, paper. And now we're going to go in here and just change these. Um, I don't know of an automated way to do this, to be completely honest. But I do know. Yeah. The enum you made is integer, and we're expecting a string. Actually, you know what? Okay. I think there's I think there is something we could do here. So one thing, um, when we're in a situation like this, like right now, that I, you know, we could, we could go and make this change, and it wouldn't leave the system broken or you know red for a short amount of time. Um, however, there there is a way we can do this where the system is never broken, uh, which is called a parallel change. And I actually think, I know it's kind of overkill for what, where we're at right now, but this is a good way to demonstrate that. Um, it's also a good way can... to practice, because when we, we practice the simplest case, when, when we are in a more complicated situation, we have a muscle we can go back to, muscle memory. Exactly. So, um, so this is us doing this as a parallel change. And a parallel change is basically an additive change, where, uh, say we have A, and in this case, you know, we have our string, our play, and we want to start moving towards using the enum shape. So what we can do is add shape as a second argument into the round constructor. It's not being read. That's a checkpoint where we could actually commit if we really wanted to. And then we can then move all usages of our play internally in round to now the new shape object. And then once our play is finally not being used anymore, then we can safely delete it. Um, this is a very common pattern, actually, when you're doing like database migration work but it actually works for code refactoring as well. Um, so here we go. So this is the parallel change version. We would say shape.rock. So we got to import it. And now we want to change the signature. Um, we know we're going to use it, so I'm going to just put private. Oh, okay, we got it. Back down. Um, one thing to note too is if we actually went and refactored this, we now are passing rock here, which because it's not being read is fine. Um, we got a not a great variable name. Uh, and I think I probably could have updated that a little better, but you want to call this um, our shape? Yeah. For now, we can rename it back if we want. Okay. Um, well, I like then, shape over play. Yeah, me too. So I think the last thing I would say is just to make this actually relevant. We have... Oh yeah, and this is the weird thing about um notice this when we when we did the when we did the change, it it only thought rock was being used on this enum, but we actually want the whole thing, so we just go like that, and now everything works. I know this is um we haven't really changed much, additive change, but I think this is still a commit point. Um let's run test to make sure. Yep, test pass. Test pass. I'm gonna commit and then why don't we rotate for the additive change? Another so um start. Parallel change for shape enum. All right, let's take it over. Awesome. So we want to use our shape in here. So instead of, I think it just becomes our shape. And this is going to equal shape.paper. Yep. And now you notice that we are there. And if we run our tests, Test still pass. That's pretty nice. Yeah. We could commit here. Mm hmm We do like micro commits. We are green. We added we changed functionality. Or actually we I mean we refactored and we had no behavior change because our test still passed. So we want to change to use our shape. Push that. Yeah, let's do it. 
And now if we look our play, WebStorm isn't helping us out because it shows it as private, but we are no longer using it. So we can we can right click and hit find usages and there are none. So I can go ahead and command F6 to bring back that nice window. There is this little minus key, but if you look and hover over it, there's a command and a backspace or a command delete. Um, and so you can actually just hit command delete and then you could hit the refactor button and there's also a shortcut for that to hit command enter. And if you notice, it cleans it up and all of our tests are still there in a nice automated way. And we're yeah. green again. Yeah, I like the change. Learning the shortcuts on the change signature command has like saved me so much time because there's so many drop downs if you can just navigate. Uh, because it lets you tab through all the fields that are important as you fill in a new field, which is nice. Yeah, I know uh, so that. This is I know that shortcut. So thank you for explaining that. This is removing our play from round. Very cool. So we have two easy tests. I just did two commits. I'm going to pass it back to you. Let you write the failing test. Yeah, so I think at this point now, we've done a really nice refactor. And I think, why don't we just finish up scoring for choosing? So the, and we'll just do the last one, scissors, if I can uh, spell. Um, do you want to do two steps in one, or do you want to keep it small? I was going to propose a parameterized test. Maybe you write parameterized test for this one, and we can refactor the other two into it. Yeah, let's do it. So it, um, yeah, it. I think we want an array, right? First. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. So it so shape dot and then we don't even have scissors. How do you spell scissors? I don't know how to spell anything. That's fine. That's how you spell it. Too many. Oh, it is. See, I just second guess everything about myself. Um, all right, and then create field. Okay, weird. They call it a field, but that's okay. And then we would say um, for each, and then shape. And now here we're going to say it um, returns um, score. I guess it's, yeah, I guess it needs to be both shape and a score. Um, so I'm just kind of going a little ahead here, but okay. So then this is actually going to be an object. It's going to make it look a little bit messy, but that's okay. Um, shape this okay and then we're going to just do a little bit of javascript uh, nonsense here and we're going to we're going to deconstruct this object being passed in and hopefully oh yeah i can put friends around this thank you all right there we go and it's able to infer the type just because it's you know the same so now what we're saying is this is kind of like a test case object um the score is three and the shape is scissor cord so return score for choosing shape and now inside of this test, we can just write expect um, new round um, shape to equal. You need a score on the end of your new round. Thank you. Okay. And if we run all these tests, now we see returns three for choosing two. And this is the beauty of uh, number enums. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> oh, we got a failing test. So why don't we get it passing first and then we can... Uh... Talk about the weird enum thing in TypeScript. Yeah. So I think this is going to be yet another simple. Yeah, totally. Uh, our shape is equal to shape dot scissors. I want to return three. Love it. Add our uh, add scoring for playing scissors. All right, we're in green land. Is there any refactorings? You mentioned we have an oddity for enums. So yeah, I would just say if we go back to the test run, like look at the test runner in the bottom left here on the screen. Um, yeah, it returns three for choosing two. So the problem is the you know, enums in most languages are represented as numbers. The weird thing in TypeScript, and this is totally an assumption, is when you actually say the enum, it's en it ends up just being a key value pair. So when you say shape.rock, you're actually putting in the number two there. Um, okay. It's not a special type. And shape dot, 
and, and enums are basically just type aliases for that invariant. So basically, what, you know, when I write shape.rock, I'm saying, oh, the number two can go in there. Um, so, you know, in some languages, it's really nice. Uh, the enums, you can actually see their names. So I, I think mm -hmm. the way that I've usually done enums in TypeScript is uh, make them string enums by, you can just basically write equals and just put the string name in there, um, which is overkill, but then you can actually read what it is. Um, so I've seen, I actually seen a lot of code bases not do this. And then like they're looking at their logs and now you have to remember what status for means. Um, now, if you look here, we have scissors. Yeah. Instead of two. That's a great readability thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, it seems to be like, you know, in, in C sharp is where I'm pulling most of this from. Like they have a two string method and it takes the value and, and stringifies it. So you still get the, the nice integer kind of reference and things when you store it a little bit less. And then you, when you want to actually serialize it to you reuse readable things, it can be a string and actually readable, which is nice. Uh, so this is definitely different learning TypeScript. Yeah. So I think the next refactor is, I mean, that is a commit point if we want, um, but I think adding on these cases and reducing duplication would be the next step. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. And comma that, and comma that. And you say two is paper. Yep, and one is rock. Let me see, one is rock. And then, so then we can go ahead and do a run. And so now you look at three for scissors, two for paper, one for rock, and we got two for paper and rock. So we're going to go ahead and delete those. Beautiful. And that is definitely a commit. We did two small things yeah. there. Get second dash down. And what did we do here? We changed enum to string and refactored to use parameterized tests. Yep. And some might say this parameterized test is like 1 million times more complicated <laughs> than the three one-liners. I think, um, you know, it's really, it's a series of compromises, all design is. Um, I'm comfortable with this type of design, so it doesn't really bother me, but, you know, um, I wouldn't say that parameterized tests are like a silver bullet. A lot of times where I've, you know, written parameterized, parameterized tests that are so confusing that no, you, you have no idea what's going on. Um, uh, so just, just a call out. I've seen some people uh, shoot their code bases up with basically parameterized tests and it's just, it's not a silver bullet. Uh, it, it's a tool and it, it's good in a lot of places and it's bad in some. For sure. All right, what is the next test we want to write? Do we want to go back to our disco tree? Yeah, let's do that, because I honestly don't know. Love that idea. That's why we have it. So I feel like we we did this. We did not your score, because there's the outcome as well. And maybe that's the next thing oh, yeah. we do. So basically what we're doing right now is we're scoring around, And I like that, because we're kind of solving the, the one case first. Um, yeah. So, okay. Now, I think what we want is not the other player's input, our opponent's input. Love it. Win, lose, draw. Let's do it. And this, I think this is a, a lot more complicated. <laughs> yeah. So the other refactor I, I see here is I see these ifs and they're simple, but I, I'd almost like a map lookup. Um, or a method on round. Yeah. Because we can encapsulate our shape. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that refactor first. Because I agree. That's a. So uh, what you're saying is line line six, basically the this dot r shape triple equals shape dot paper. So not the return two, but the. I okay. I I see what you're saying. I think there's two parts. There's one. There's. Okay. Never mind. The map lookup would um, negate what my idea was. Let's do the map lookup. That's fine. I think this looks like private our score map. Can we can we call it shape score map? Yeah. Because it really not has nothing to do with our score. It's really just like 
what is the scoring per shape? Yeah, and there is a nice TypeScript way to uh, to enforce this, but I can't actually remember the, the syntax. That's fine. We can figure it out. So it It'll infer it. Shape, shape dot rock and colon, right? Yep, colon one. one. Shape dot paper. Shape dot paper. Colon two. two. That's a period, not a comma. <laughs> and shape dot scissors. Colon three. Yeah, I love this. This is great. And the reason why I like adding the type here is if we would ever add. It actually enforces when you have an enum like this. If you ever add an enum, TypeScript would actually kind of throw an error um, and let you know that you need to add something to the missing map. And so I, this is one of the benefits because I use this a lot, uh, why we would yep. want that type. I use it a lot, but I still can't remember the trick with the types. Try to, um, well, let's, let's use it. And then this, uh, once we commit, we'll, we'll play with that type for a minute or two. Yeah. So we're passing. And so this becomes return shape score map when we pass in. Uh, our shape, yeah, this uh, our shape. And run the tests, and look, we're passing. Passes. Yep, that's nice. Um, this transformation is we're transforming like conditional logic into data. Um, mm -hmm. so what we literally just did was we made a data mapping, and I think, um, that was a good eye for that. Considering the problem basically defined it as a map, it was saying rock is one, paper is two. I, I think that is the hint that, hey, a map's probably not a bad place to look this up because now you have it all dynamically in one place. If the scoring was to ever change, you just got to update it in one place and you don't have to change conditional logic. You're just changing data, which is a lot safer. Love it. Awesome. So what is our next step? That was a small refactor that I wanted to do. You said you wanted to play with the type? Well, you were saying, yeah, I mean, if we just go in here for a sec, like TypeScript can identify the type sort of. Um, well, that's not really great. So I think what we can do is say um, shape, score, map. And then if we extract this as an interface, I think I know what it is. I'm pretty sure what you'd say is here, you would say, Shape number. number. Um, and what's this mad about? Computer property name interface must refer to an expression whose type is literal type or unique symbol type. What you're doing is very close. I think it's um like the instance of. I think you might need to wrap it in an instance of or type of. Let's try it. Uh, I think without the expression. Nope, doesn't like that. You know what? Nothing a quick Google search can't use uh, to use uh, enum at TypeScript on an uh, object. And again, the benefit I see of this is if we would ever add another enum, and we know we probably won't unless we want to expand this to Lizard Spock. Um, this would help give us a TypeScript compilation error that we're missing a mapping. And I think that's actually pretty valuable to, to document. And I don't know. That's, mad. that's okay. So, um, yeah, there's a way to do it. I, I think it's not worth the effort right now. So instead of even changing this, I'm just going to get reset hard and boop. go back. Look at that. Going back. All right. So now we were talking about, as the next step, actually scoring um, not just our choice, but the actual um, the win, loss, or draw. Yeah. So do we want to add on to this? Because it sounds like we may be changing score. So or I think we just these maybe three calculate ones... calculate win, loss, or draw? Because we're scoring an entire round right there, mm -hmm. we actually are implicitly saying that that is a, a loss. Mm -hmm. um, which, 
And actually, maybe maybe what would make more sense is instead of us calculating score, because we we could add you know opponent shape in into that. Um, but yeah, we could just say like our shape score. Um. Just to keep the to keep it separate, I kind of like that because then we're testing it a little bit smaller. Yeah, I know it's um overkill, but no, I actually like this because now we're testing this independently of when we're going to be testing the full score. Keeps it simple, keeps it small. Okay, so now let's actually test the real score of a round, um, and I think lo the losing's the um. Maybe the simplest one because it adds zero. And um, we we could go right to a parameterized test if we want, since we kind of know that's sort of what we're kind of wanting anyway. So we could just do a, a di yeah, basically copy and paste. Um, just make it there's one test case at first. Okay. And then we probably want opponent shape and our shape. Power shape. Power shape. Yep. Okay. And a root. All right. And, and now we can just say opponent shape. Are... Get rid of the... Say that one more time. I uh, uh, just get rid of the S. Um, just because we can't have an apostrophe there. So opponent shape. I don't know All why right. that was. What beat scissors, rock? Yeah. And so we would expect still a score of three. Because our loss yes. is zero. Yes. Uh, you oh, got to make opponent shape on the deconstructed. Yeah, yeah, there we go. All right. Okay, and, and it is three. And so we want to just call score now? Yep. Or total score? Do we want to denote it? Or just do we like score again? Let's uh, let's keep with, uh, let's, you know what, let's say total score because it is denoting a little bit more context. We'll go with total score for now, and then we can uh, see how we feel about yeah. it. We... Notice that we're not passing in opponent shape, which I think is fine, because we don't have our triangulation test. Yep, totally. Oh, and so, I think we're in a uh, failing test now. Yep. So now you just need to return, for now, to make this pass, return this dot r shape score. Uh, which, okay, I see. We're doing ping pong. <laughs> <laughs> and I would argue that that is not uh, the simplest because you could hard code three right now. I could hard code three, yeah. I think it was just like we know it by definition, we're saying the threes because our shape score is three. Um, but it, yes, it I is agree. not the simplest. All right. All right. You want to do a quick commit? Yeah, quick commit, and then we can. Um do the next test case. So add um, start to test total score. We haven't really implemented anything, I would say. Um, but, okay, so now the next test case would be, I don't know, what is the next simple test case? I mean, let's do the tie. So if we do scissors and scissors, our score should be six. Because at this point, if we if we continue down the loss shape, we're going to just have the same thing as above. So I feel like it's we always probably need score. to do a draw. Yeah. Okay. So two. Oh no. Um. So no, uh, we can six. just do the same thing six, and they're both choosing scissors. And now this is yeah. where it fails. Yeah. Okay. Yep, so if I, I just that. try the simple, oh, 
<laughs> what is our simplest? So if, oh, we don't even have that yet. That would be why. So I think so we, we don't even have be... the opponent shape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So again, I'm going to have my favorite chain signature. So command N is new line. Mm -hmm. So private. We're going to say opponent. I could sell. Shape. It is of type shape. And the value in this call is, because we have to give it something, is opponent. Man, I can't spell opponent. So this is saying I want a variable called opponent shape. And so the nice thing here is like, hey, we don't have one defined here. But if we look here, we have a private opponent shape that did exactly what we would like. Yep. So we need we do need one there. So what we can do is just put one in, a dummy value, because we're not really using it. So maybe just shape that rock or whatever you want to put in there. Technically it's not shouldn't be being used. And we're back to just still having only one test failing. I think that's okay. So I like the idea of this maybe even saying shape.none. Hmm. I'd say uh for we're we're still in red. Um once we get to green, maybe we, we take a look at that. If that's cool. Yeah. Yep. So ooh, first row. If we're gonna say this dot pony shape is equal to this dot r shape. Return this dot our shape score. Oh no. You have opponent our shape. shape. <laughs> too oh, many O's. Two. There Plus are three. too many O's. All right. So it's super easy, super simple. Yeah, the tie is super easy. Uh, we're going to add because we're green. Add. Some points for tying. Yep. So now we want to win, right? Yes. Um... So if I duplicate here, scissors beats paper. So we want to say paper. And we win at six, and this is three. So we should actually have a score of nine here. Yep. And that is our failing test. And so the thing I do, the one thing that I might actually advocate if this is getting, like you said, uh, if this is getting under, like we don't know what we're testing here, you could quickly say this is lose, tie, and win. But again, mm -hmm. this might be an also a, a reason to not parameterize test. Yeah, yeah, because in, in a way, by putting test. the comment, you know, all comments are apologies, so we're kind of, and then there's another way we can get around that too by, you know, the test. What's nice is we're, we have a dynamic object here, so we could just add a test name to the thing. But again, the more and more you add to the parameterized test, the more and more you should be like, are, should, are these actually just different tests? I think right now we're not in that state. There's only three tests. But um, yeah, I think that's something to keep in mind for sure. Yeah, it was more of a call out of this is when you start to lose some readability, scannability, and parameterized tests. Yep, totally agree. Anyway, you have a failing test, and we're playing ping pong. So Let's do it. So now in this case, um, we have nine. So the simplest possible thing here would be we have one failing test. So whatever the input is, we're going to throw into the if statement, and then we're going to return the exact value they want. In this case, this would be this dot opponent shape is scissors, I think. Yep. Um. And no, this, our opponent shape uh, is paper. Our shape is scissors. Okay. Uh, uh, paper. Okay. The scissors. Sorry, I, I noticed there's the test we're, we're doing our shape first, and the production code we're saying the opponent shape first, and that's what's confusing me. And that is a good maybe refactor ability point. But for now, let's make a pass. So this is scissors. Okay, and if it's this, we're just going to return nine. 
That's the ugliest look looking, looking prettier earlier. thing I've ever seen in my life. Okay, I'm gonna add the curly so it doesn't look so ugly. <laughs> no, what is going on here? <gasps> Go in there. All right, it's just ugly no matter which way we slice it, and that's okay because I actually had a suggestion for changing that. Okay, it passes. I think we commit. Cool with that. Yep. All right. Calculate. Um, uh, winning score for paper over scissors. Yeah. So I'm thinking we have a, a few more minutes here. Maybe we do a light refactoring, like you mentioned, and then maybe we leave ourselves a, a failing test when we revisit this next week. Like that idea. So my thing right now would be, um, this to me, I guess we don't actually have duplication anymore, but it would be nice if we just had a method that said like opponent shape is paper, opponent shape is scissors, and it encapsulated both of those checks. Um, I think you're pointing to maybe even a shape class. That's like, true, because we... then we could just say this at opponent shape dot is paper. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, that's a like class, idea. and that would give us give us some nice things. Then even I think you could you could the shape score that we have as the map up there is kind of revealing itself as a part of that shape and not a part of the round. So we could extract class. Can you just add a method to an enum? I don't know. Can you? I would uh, hope not, just because of how enums in other languages work. But this is TypeScript. <laughs> you can extend it. So yes, you can. Oh, geez. <laughs> but the thing is, you don't have an instance of it again. So it really, the way you're thinking about it, which I think is the correct way, is um, because so so you could add it to the static namespace of shape. Because at the end of the day, everything in JavaScript is um, an object, and ob yeah. they're prototypical. So you could you could add methods to anything. Um, but without going down that rabbit hole, yes, a class would be great. Can we do it in three minutes? Um, maybe. Do you want to try? Do you want to just play with that extension? See what that looks like. No, it's not going to work because it's not an instance. It is the shape class itself. So we okay. could have like shape dot you know, is paper and you'd pass a shape into it. We're, we're trying to encapsulate it on the actual class itself. Um, so what we could do is start to, like we're, we're, we're basically, we want to get moved to this. So. Yeah, um, export class, shape class. And then we'll just say shape class and we'll actually put class on it because we're going to probably renew Remove or yeah, rename this is it, the know? worst thing in the world, but we're going to rename it to shape once we're done, for sure. It's better um, than shape two. <laughs> it is better than shape two, that's what I'm saying. Um, and honestly, we could even test this independently too, which I think, um, so maybe taking the two ideas of let's end on a failing test, and also this kind of puts us in a place to remember where we wanted to leave off. So um, um, it is paper. I don't know. I was going to say the quickest one would be actually let's change the, if you want three failing tests, I think that first set of parameterized tests is a shape class test. Because that, that is the noting like that is like this to me is, is a shape class test now. Oh, cause the shape itself could have the score on it. Oh yeah. yeah that's not a bad yeah. idea. So then this would really be like our API we'd want is new shape and it's just shape at that point and um, then score um to equal score and now new shape is not imported so we can oh sorry shape, shape part. Class. slash uh, that was what i was trying to type in all right and i mean let's get it so it's compiling and then we can yes yes we gotta get it to compile actually this is yeah, um honestly. This is a pretty... I'm fine just implementing this. It'll take two seconds. I was going to say, yeah, copy-paste at this point, right? Boop. 
So I'll put it on here. And then, yeah, copy paste. We're kind of moving logic. Again, this is sort of a parallel change, I would say. We're. Oh, yeah, because we're not using shape class. It's totally parallel. Yeah. So we're duplicating logic, bad, but um, it's making it so we're not breaking the system. Good. It's this um, dot shape, not this dot our shape. Ta da! Now, no failing test. Now, no failing tests. Now, uh, I think you could write your is paper, or we can continue to refactor real quick. Yeah, I think migrating everything over is super easy. Uh, actually. So I'm fine just doing that real quick. Uh, I think commit and then do that. And actually, you know what? Last time we, we uh, tried chasing the dragon for like 15 or 20 minutes. Let's not do that. Let's actually just write the one failing test of his paper and then we can uh, we can leave with yep. that. Um, okay, yep. perfect. So uh, start or copy over score logic onto new shape class. Love that idea. Okay. And then, yeah, I mean, we have the shape classes up here or shape tests. So I'm going to just say it is paper shape. And this will be our failing test where we say expect new shape class shape dot uh, paper is paper um, to dot equal or to be true. And then we just need to implement this. And I'm just gonna have a return false. I'd rather end on a failing test on a compilation issue. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. All right. So go ahead and put the X for ignore. Yes. So yeah, there's two things we could do here. We could commit and push this right here which then would be like the equivalent of a pushing a failing build. So with um, Mocha Chai, by putting X here, we're actually just ignoring the test, which is called out here. You're, and um, when you're running the test all the time, it's you're like, oh, why, why are we... Uh, yeah, here it is. Why are we skipping a test? So it kind of brings your attention. The reason why we're trying to end on a failing test is so we don't have to remember where we left off. We could just go right to it. So... Yeah. Before I is forget, anything else I think you want to do? Yeah, I mean, you can commit this, but I think let's get out of that shape class because I, I think if we rename that enum to hand shape, like we started, and then it's the shape that wraps the hand shape, that kind of denotes maybe it's a little bit easier and we get out of the shape class terrible name that we have. Is that at least a step yeah, in the I'll right find, direction? I'm funny when I do that. Yeah, hand shape. Love it. It's a good idea. Shape. And then this just becomes a shape. Yep. And will we need hand shape by the end? Maybe. No idea. Useful now. But We're I like still that. In the same state. Oh, like yeah. No Anytime we have that class. <laughs> or I interface. Yeah. Those are. Anytime that happens, you really should ask. Like, I'm. I'm missing something here. Um, now we kind of got around it by just, uh, <laughs> you know, prefixing, prefixing with a hand, which is not, I would say it's a better solution than slapping I or slapping class under the name. Um, but I think it's a smell and I think we can address it next time. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching and tuning in and check us out next week as we continue this scoring of rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. Thanks everybody. What? All right. We're live. We're live. We're live. It's very awesome. It is. I don't know if I've got allergies, but I keep waking up with just a bunch of... I don't know. My airways are, are blocked, <laughs> and I need them to be clear. But But we're live. I just like How's sharing one little one little thing. How's the weather? Uh, you know, Buffalo has been just doing this. So I don't know. I step outside and I bet I honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it was snowing outside right now. Yesterday, it was like downpouring at one point and then it was really sunny. Uh, so who knows?
Yeah, it's super in the cold weird time in, in Missouri. Got it. Okay, so this probably is super cold outside. Um, but yeah, last couple of days here we had a we had a temperature drop. We had a, a few thunderstorms and some rain and stuff. But yeah, today's like the high of fifty and low of thirty two. So like, there's actually a freeze or frost warning too, which is fun. Yeah, I think the other day was like high of like seventy two and low of forty. Just like. You can't plan around that. <laughs> I don't know when it's gonna be. Worse. Oh, oh, it's forty to forty-eight. Actually, that's pretty. That's pretty good. Can't yeah. complain about that. <laughs> so we're back. It's yeah. Sunday. I think we have a problem that we're solving, right? Yeah. Like rock, paper, scissors. We're trying to score we were doing up. rock, paper, scissors. I remember we were right on the cusp of a beautiful refactoring, um, I think. And we're going to figure it out. But I'm excited. <clears throat> so it looks like what? we were scoring on the outcome. Um, the if thing If we win or lose or draw in the round, just from our discovery tree here. Yeah, we could probably spend some time separating those out, but I think we were working on one of the wins or draws because we technically have everything lose with everything adding zero. Uh, let's let's look at the discovery that. tree now. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Thank you. <laughs> that was a guess. For a little bit, May. All right. We'll make those. Actually, I think mine is orange. Right now, we are we're kind of adding green by default, so it's like a. Yeah, we yeah, totally. And I think three for draws we were working on, but we'll look at where we left off. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and for those for those joining, yeah, we're doing day two of Advent of Code. Um, and that problem is basically we get a fun encrypted little rock, paper, scissors game, and we have to figure out the score. Mm. Um, and we've spent a decent amount of time building, kind of figuring out the problem. We're in a pretty good spot to hopefully finish it today. Yeah. Yeah, this is All day right. two of 2022. Super easy way to find it. Yeah. All right, let's jump into the code. All right. We did a good thing last week, if I remember correctly, which was uh, put in... Oh, yeah, your run tab's not there. Put in um, a failing or a skipped test. Skipped test. Yeah. We have is paper shape. Expect is paper to be true. Okay. Oh. Well, is it actually failing or did we skip it and it was true? Okay, good. Good past us's. <laughs> yeah, we, we skipped it because we didn't want to break the build, even though there's no build here. It's still good practice to, to at least yeah. have a quick way to. Not break the build, but give us a good documentation of where we're at. And something we like to do in, um, like in an actual production system, sometimes like, like if it was if I was writing code by myself, sometimes I would just have a failing test. There's not a lot of times I'm doing that though. When we're actually working on a production system, you don't want to break the build, but you might want to have some way to remember what you were doing Friday afternoon, Monday morning. Sometimes a fail or a skipped test is an easy way to be like, huh. What is that? Um, and it just it jogs your memory a little bit. But okay. Yeah. Um, well, I assume so we have this... papers. Yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna say we have our shape class, mm -hmm. in which we have our hand shape enum. And so you said we were on the cusp of a refactor. I think we were trying to kind of wrap the shape class into giving us some some niceties around looking at our code of is it equal to shape and is it equal to scissors and kind of giving us some nice kind of domain 
domain design to our code, which I think is a good thing. Yeah, if you scroll up, the class we had above was round, and we realized there was a lot of cohesive logic, more of the round has two shapes that kind of go into it, the opponent's shape and our shape. And uh, yeah, we were realizing a lot of the logic was more cohesive towards shapes itself, so we started to extract that out. Um, I think a lot of this came from line 17 and 18. We're like, it's, it would be really nice to say is paper, but round dot is paper doesn't make any sense. Yep. And then we also started, I think we copied these over as duplicates to uh, say, well, if you're a shape, you should know your own score. Which makes total sense. Yeah. Um, so these will eventually go away. It looks like we have some refactoring there to clean up. But we do have a failing test of is paper hard-coded to false. All right. Make that true. <laughs> yeah. So if we... Yay. So it, we nobody's using simple that route. Yep. Yep. Woohoo. Uh, make is paper pass as simple as possible. So there I have a shortcut, git cm is git commit with message. So all I have to do is type in. Uh, for those of you following along with that command, I should probably type them out, but that's okay. And then that's push that. So we probably want to write a triangulation test around its paper. So it yep. is not paper. All right. I'd love to copy this and just say rock. And I'm going to do scissors too. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, They're so. Ooh. Okay. It's all the same, right? I mean, rocks are papers and papers, scissors, are good. <laughs> all right. Well, that's a failing test. So I'm going to hand it off to, to you. I'm so glad. I was sorry. In the back of my mind, I was thinking. They have to be true, and I believe uh, there is um, there's not. So I, I'm so glad that it falls because to write to not be true would be uh, uh, too too much of a headache. But okay, let's do it. <laughs> uh, return this dot shape equals hand shape dot paper. And that's just running the one test. I'm going to go back to running all of them. Yay. All right. Um, correctly implement is paper. All right. So let's just do the next shape. I think so. Do we want to make one test for the next shape? And just say correctly identifies rock and with three lines. Is that too noisy? Just an experiment. Yeah, just an I was going to. Yeah, I was thinking there's two ways we could do it. We could either say is paper and then have have the. Like have it just say. So this is this is my idea. Um, which is similar to yours. Um, which is basically we say in here rock. Um, or sorry. Notice how we're, we're creating a shape every time. Mm -hmm. um, oop. So I want to extract a variable here. Two occurrences. We'll call it paper. So paper is paper to be true. Paper dot is rocks what, you, what we want to do next? Yeah, sure. Why not? To be false. So I was thinking, why don't we just say is paper and then it can also check its identity. That way we don't have to create uh, nine shapes. We could just create three. It's a little bit easier. That sound cool? Yeah. And actually, you got me with that new paper, new shape paper. Why don't we make a paper constant? That's a good idea. You could, you could make a static. But yeah, we are in red now because this rock is there. So we'll go there. But that's what the light bulb hit. And I was like, yeah, why don't we just have shape.paper? And it, it returns us a static shape. And um, let me maybe, um, we'll finish this just for fact sort of refactor which is is rock and then is scissors shape love it and then we can right now we haven't implemented everything but that's still fine okay and then now we're at a failing test so if you want to take it over sir 
I'm going to create that method is rock, and I'm going to say return false. Mm -hmm. And that passes. Cool. And I think we've got the pattern here, you know, if you want to just go for it. Yep, we'll do. Do one quick check in just in case I screw, yeah. screw up a bunch. But uh, uh, simple implement of it rock. All right, so I want to extract. Oh, you did the same thing as me. Yeah, it means we need to start using our tools more. So option up gives me scope selection. Oh, see, I didn't know that. So we want rock is rock. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, scissors is rock. And we want to change this to be true, and that will give us a failing test. Nice. Yep. I think it's just going to be that there quick. We go. <clears throat> Why did it only? Here we go. Cool. That is definitely in check-in. Now we've got our pattern set in place. I like having these methods is paper is rock rather than checking some data property everywhere. Because then if you ever change that data property, now you have to change every single implementation of it. Yep. So while, while is rock and is paper and is scissors may seem overkill, um, it actually allows you to, you're encapsulating that state a lot better, that data. Yeah. Do you want to go ahead and fully implement his scissors? I think we. Yeah, have yeah, we can do that. A real so, quick. Boom. Is okay. This is where uh, is scissors. I really don't want to spell scissors wrong for some reason. I'm wondering if my my like elementary school English teacher yelled at me a lot for not being able to spell. Because I really, really. I'm one, I'm terrible at spelling, but two, I, I really care that I'm terrible at spelling, even though I won't learn how to spell. Uh, <laughs> okay, so if I run all these tests, we want scissors to be true. We want the other ones to be false. <clears throat> and all of them fail because they're not returning anything. And yeah, I could just, you it's... know, go in here and just do this. But um, I think you're fine. Yeah. We're totally Let's fine. At this point, we've got a nice little pattern. This is a small enough step that I feel safe to do it again. Cool. All right. Then we're going to say git add, git commit, and we're going to implement, implement is, scissors. is scissors. And just to remind right. if we haven't said it in a while, our git commit message is applying this commit will. And we try to finish that sentence. Yep. So if you look at like some of these, you say applying this commit will add simple implement of his rock. Applying this commit will implement his rock. Applying this commit will implement his scissors. Um, applying this commit will make his paper pass as simple as possible. So there's no right way to do git commit messages. <clears throat> um, I, I like that way. Um, but again, you know, it depends on whatever, whatever standard everybody agrees on. So I would love to make these some shape dot scissors, scissors shape dot rock. Yeah. Yep, I like that idea. So it is so you, static. I'm sure if you actually just rock. go and try using it on line twenty nine, I think it'll just work. So if we want to say shape dot. Scissors. Create field static scissors and it says new. No, not abstract new. And... Hand shape that rock. Uh you you it's because it's a field, uh, not yeah. not a method. So 
We don't need a method though, right? Can we not? Yeah, yeah. Method? Yep. It was. It's just because of the colon. That's why. There you go. Oh, because the colon was trying to type it. It was. Yeah. You have hand shape spell. Uh, yeah. Okay. I love that. So I'm going to say shape dot rock. Yep. And we know it's a type shape. And it's going to be a new shape. Shape dot rock. And cut shape dot paper. Because these are immutable, this is a mutable class, really. Um, this is totally safe to have these static, sort of singleton scissors, rock, and paper objects. Yeah. And it'll be really Otherwise, nice to clean it up. It'll kind of hide this enum, which will be really cool. Yeah, agreed. So we're going to commit huh. this. And produces static. Static what? Static constants? Static implementations? I don't know. What do you want to call um, it? You are basically... I mean, it's making paper... Uh, like, make shape <clears throat> um, singleton objects. They they're they're singletons is you know is um uh, un uh, liked as a pattern as singleton is they are singleton objects. Sweet. So I think we have this, but I'm looking that we don't actually have. Our, oh yeah, we have our score. So I'm thinking our next refactor should be. Let's add them over here. Let's yeah, let's do it. Shape. We can throw out um, basically that shape rock map and all that stuff. So yeah, I think um, instead of taking in a hand shape, we wanted to take in a shape itself. Which, yeah. um, again, is probably a pretty big change. Um, so I know last time, first time we started working on this, we introduced the concept of parallel changes. I think we should do a parallel change um, for both. Sure. Um, I just did that refactor, so I think it's your turn. Yeah, let's do it. So um, again, our we we can even test drive the parallel change here. So what we really want to do is on every single one of these. Oh yeah, we have shape here, perfect. For every single one of these fields, oh we've got oh no, parameterized tests are going to be fun to change. Um, <laughs> we're basically going to want to make this. Um, our shape, our new shape. I don't know. How do we want to do this? I'm trying to think what's the best way. Um, you know, you know, because our, our shape constructor still takes in, um, the hand shape, I think it actually might be as a, a first, a small vertical of, we just call new shape here and here. And then at least then we can change the internals and then we can commit that and then we could come back to the test. And then if we wanted to make this use the shape.rock and shape.paper. Um, I think that'd be a small way of slicing this up. If you're cool with that. Sure. Sure. So that would mean we just go in here and say this. Oh, sorry, that's not a that's not a parallel change. What am I doing? Now we can add just two more constructor arguments here. So we say new shape our shape, new shape, opponent shape. And you want the second one, change constructor. Yeah, that's really weird that it's what the first one is. That just confused me. Okay, cool. So we changed the constructor. Um, technically, we only had one constructor in our um, production code, which is pretty cool too. Um, I think JavaScript only allows one constructor, right? Sorry, I meant one constructor usage. Um, 
Uh, and that's the one. So I, I, the one benefit of us having this parameterized test again, if I look down, there's only this one constructor usage right here on line 54. So doing this actually it made the change even easier. So we added it. I could commit at this point. I'm okay continuing just because that was just two lines, but um. Yeah. We now can come in here and do this. I think it's a really good call because you're saying this is a small change, but I think in real world, if we were on a, a bigger team, I think we would vote to commit here because we love continuous integration and trunk-based development. And so we want to make sure um, we can get it in and share share the love as, as fast as possible. A new shape. Um, New oh, you can shape. totally just keep going. I agree with you that it's a small change, but I was saying just trying to point out differences. If we were in a, a real team environment, we would be. Yeah. You know, it was eleven lines of changes. I I think I like having small. I I'm uh, circle backing. I'm actually going to do that because um, I do think that was worth it. Now here, now we have unused parameters. What we want to do now? Well, first, shape is a bad name. Maybe you should call this again our shape, our new shape. How about that? Yeah. And then opponent, a uh, new, uh, yeah, opponent, new shape. Again, renames not used. I actually had a really interesting idea, and we don't have to pivot back. Yeah. But um, I think a previous version of me would have, instead of introduced these as constructor arguments, I probably would have just nude them up in the constructor. So I would have said our shape. Oh yeah, yeah. And and then slowly refactor, like, well, there's no reason to just new it up in our constructor. Let's pass it forward. And so that would have been a really interesting, different way to approach the same thing. And it's kind of parallel, but it, you don't expose the parallelism until uh, you want to promote it. Um, I like, yeah, that's a, you're thinking the same way I was thinking with the vertical of like, what's, what's the small way? Because we want to upgrade, we want to update both the internal usage, getting rid of the duplication. And then it would be really nice to also make clients not have to know by handshake. And those are two separate changes. And I think the way that we're doing this today, we kind of, yeah, we kind of did both at the same time. Um, but we were able to at least not have to change this, these test cases yet. But that is it. That is a very uh, smart idea. Um, another smart way of doing it. But okay. So now in this case, our shape score, well, our new shape has a score in it. So we could literally just go in here and say this dot our new shape dot score. Run the test. That worked. You're welcome. I'm going to come in and add and uh, why don't we rotate with that too? So um, use our use new shape class to get score in round. All right. Very awesome. So looking here, though, no. click to the, the nice Git helper. I'm thinking we, I see two things. Obviously, this is unused, but I also see two usages here, and it got very simplified. I almost just want to inline this. Are we good to inline that real quick? Yeah, let's do it. <clears throat> just because I think it's super simple. Two and it also shows that this is, this is unused. So I think a quick yep. bit of cleanup there makes that really nice. Yeah, look at that. And I'll do a control R. Um, remove. You know, we'll say inline. Inline function and remove score map from Ryan. That's first, and then yeah, here's our next opponent shape. So let's where do we see our opponent shapes at? Well, yeah, it looks like we're just using it to know what what it is. So we could basically say opponent new shape dot is paper. Yeah. Oh man, this is gonna clean the code up so much. Uh, this dot opponent new shape. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, equals. We don't have equals. Oh, oh, we don't have equals. Okay, so that's fine. Um, 
this is another reason why doing this as a parallel change is safer because we might actually have not fully identified the the like polymorphic interface that we're looking for here. Yeah. So let's let's recognize that we want uh, determines. But before we do that, I think you had some changes. Can we finish up? Um, like, just do the do line eleven. Line eleven is also scissors, line eleven scissors. That way, the only uh, change uh, we have left is a quality. Um, and let's run the test just to make sure there's no changes. Okay, cool. Really no, I think that's you even moved it to one line. Man. Yeah, totally agree. Now I think that's a commit, and now we can yeah we'll we'll add a quality to our shape object. And then we'll add it here, and then we should be done with the refactor. All right. I will. That was two commits for me, but I, I want to write the failing test because I think it's. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Give you a failing test. Determines equality. I'm going to expect. Shape dot rock dot equals shape dot rock. Uh, doesn't matter. Yeah, we gotta do. We gotta do, do both cases. For sure. Yep. Do we want to go ahead and write the three lines for rock? Like follow the same pattern. Um. Let's start off with this. We're already at red. So I can take it over okay. now. You want to yeah. hit Control R just to show us that we're at red? I know we're at red because yep. we're not building, but yep. hey. And it, it doesn't build. So now we're going to create the equals method. And then we're going to return true. OK, and just to make sure that it actually, you know, fails. Turn false. Just for the right we're reason, right. yep. Got it there. And yeah, we will. Just commit there for a sec. So introduce hard coded equals method on shape. Okay. Um, okay, and then yeah, I like your idea of let's, um, we'll do basically so I know this this is now the test is testing more than one thing, but I think I like the pattern here of seeing the it kind of just makes it so it's easier to make sure that we're testing all the cases. Mm -hmm. I'm good with doing that too. So then we're at a failing test, rock equals paper. So if you want to take it. Do you want to add that third case too? Just because again it's easy. Yeah. Dupe. Scissors. There we go. Nice. All right, so I want to rename this to other shape. Okay. Instead of rock, and I think it is this dot shape is triple equals this dot other no other shape, not not this dot other <laughs> shape. shape. Dot shape. Tab is just um. Not helping me today. For no. Sure. <laughs> Yay! All right. Uh, correctly implement. Yep. Equals. <clears throat> All right. Now, do we want to backfill tests for rock or for paper and scissors? I'm kind of good at yeah. No, but I'm I'm okay either way. Um, like I think we have the triangulation. I'm okay either way. So I, I let's let's keep it like this then, so we can move on. So this becomes okay. this dot R this shape dot. equals or yeah that way. Do we want uh, opponent say, new, we... new shape? Ah, opponent ah, new yeah. shape. this dot R shape. Oh our new shape. <laughs> Look at that. So changing that line, all the tests pass. But that'll just read so much easier. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. Awesome. That, that's a tie. All right, I think that's a good commit. And now we've got dead code. 
Uh, and I actually really like that you just said is so. It's just can we just say this really quick? This time Ooh, it's fine. yep, that's better. Yep, yep. And do a quick run on that, and then commit. All right, so we are going to commit, and we say use equals in round and extract is tie. Very nice. Yeah, this is cleaning up this code. This is a beautiful refactor. Yep, love it. All right, we have so some now, bad code, and I know how much you like to delete it, so I'll let you take the deletion. Yeah. So it, it's funny because it's not saying that it's... Oh, no, it is. It's just the ID is not having... So now we can actually um, just come in here, and we'll use option F6, and now we can so just say... There, go ahead. Command delete will give you... Will... So command F6. No, command F6. Oh, oh right? command delete in and this... Then, yeah, and then command delete oh, and command okay. enter. Then command Manager will hit the refect. Yeah. I there love that go. modal. Like I've spent time memorizing that modal because it, it helps so much <laughs> to know the shortcut. Makes things right. so easy. And then the last thing I would say too is now we could rename this back to our, we can get rid of new. Um, and usually with doing a parallel change, I like doing something, you know, make it super obvious that this is the new version of doing it. Sometimes I like just putting the number two. Now that's not very obvious, but you're like two. Why is there a two there? It makes it so it doesn't live very long. Yeah. So my no, brain wrong. thinks opposite. I want to say the old one. I want to put old on the old one. Oh, so yeah. yeah. When I introduce the new one, it's the, it's the correct name. and Because we know we're deleting old anyway. Yeah. Um, so my brain goes opposite. But hey, both work and both are... I use both too. It just kind of depends, <laughs> depends on what's going on here. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So um, delete, unused... Um, Round, uh, unuse old shape, hand shapes, hand shapes in round. Okay. So now um, I think we could refactor our parameterized. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to take it? Um, I we haven't. This typed... becomes. Yeah. So it makes it super easy to just go here. Yes. Ooh, I do know something interesting. That's okay though. Um shape that scissors. Shape that paper. Shape that scissors. Shape that scissors. Uh-oh. Too quick, Happy. <laughs> shape that scissors and shape that rock. Rock and roll. Run the test. Uh, take a look at the test names. Return three for choosing object, object. So there's another thing that we should implement, and we could do it real quick, is just two string on shape. Um, honestly, instead of implementing it yourself, can you do command N for code generation? I'm, cu I'm curious if WebStorm has this in like Java. Yeah, implement members. Okay, I don't remember if toString is a or override methods. Override. No. no, okay, just just implement toString. It's it's all good. It's a good call though. ToString. Yep, and we'll just return this. Guess what? It's shape. going to return a string, which is what this dot shape is. You do need to write return though. Oh, uh, it's not Ruby. Come it's on. not Ruby. Let's do <laughs> Ruby next though. Yay. Okay, and that works. Yeah, look at all these useless return words. If we were in Ruby, we wouldn't have to do it yet. Return, 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 return. Or I guess Swift, we wouldn't have to either, right? Swift doesn't need return on one line methods. <laughs> yeah, on one line methods. Yep. <laughs> Which That's should be the goal. Weird. Right? It should be the goal. I guess if that's a way of, of um, provoking that uh, design behavior, I, I guess I'm okay with it. Because I do, I mean, look at all of our methods. They're all one lines besides the um, the method that we probably want to refactor. Oh, this one? <laughs> this one? Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> but literally, oh yeah, that's actually crazy. Like right now we're at like an eighty percent one line method. Um, that's great. Beautiful. All right, that was a great change. Da, 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 da. Change. Let's refactor. Test to use. As input. And and for those, maybe just because we're glancing over it too, in in JavaScript, when you um, when you pass a string method or a pass an object into like a string, it implicitly is going to call to string on it, as all objects should have it. That's why, that's why I was really weird weirded out that uh, it didn't do anything. Um, like when you, when we did command n, there was no code generation. So when if you implement to string, that's how you can make R shape. Even though it is an instance of a class, it still prints out the other thing. Um, and our IDE view is, is even fun here. It says no usages, but it's also not graying it out. So it's like it knows it's used, but knows it's not used at the same time. <laughs> Super weird. Yeah, and, and two string is one of these things too, where like I wouldn't test two string unless two string was very. Because right now we're only using two string as a as a way of observability of our code. We're looking at it inside of the test. Yeah, I'm good with that too. Um, go to the thank you. <clears throat> but um, so we didn't. That's why we didn't test drive two string because we're not using it for behavior. It's really for observability, and we're not like you know hedging our bets on it. Um, it honestly should be like in, in Java, you can just command and generate two string. And that I usually don't test that then uh, again, unless there's like some, I'm using it for a behavioral reason, which there has been times where I've done that. Um, yeah. Or like, say you had like a person class, right. And the two name was first name plus last name, right. There's some logic there that might warrant a test. Um, yeah. The show that two string shows is not just first name. It's first name last, but. There really is no logic here. Or, and we're not using it for, for anything. Uh, just observability. Um, mm -hmm. the developer observability, too. Okay. So the so one thing done. I think we are kind of done. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, I kind of want to make a describe for shapes just to give us a little organization. Yeah. So I actually think we've wrapped up shapes for a little bit. That's not shaped. Everything else is. And that's why I did it, because I was already getting confused. And now you can probably. Uh, oh, no, because it's a function call. It doesn't know that you can't like close it as a tab. Oh, no, you can. Bye bye. See, now we don't care. <laughs> OK, so now back to the main course here. I think the whole reason why we did that refactor was one, the logic in like total score was starting to get a little hairy. We, we wanted to have methods like is paper, is scissors. Now we have them. The reason why we wanted those was we were starting to implement basically how do we determine what a win is? Um, so maybe we go back to the discovery tree for a sec. Um, I definitely can tell you as Ty is done. We have a test for that. Yeah, we don't we don't see any changes for that. So I actually think these are kind of both in progress because we're going to have to determine if we're winning or losing now. Yes. Yeah. So I think we continue on adding on that. And and really, if we determine all the win cases. If we then look at it and say, oh, we've won, these are all the times we've won and this is the time we've drawn, then everything else is a loss. We, we might just get it for free, but, you know, I'd say let's, let's, we'll figure that out instead of, um, you know, thinking, thinking about it. Yeah. So I think I really like this. So what if we just extract this right now to say is win? Love it. Is win. Um, instead of is win, is tie. Can we say uh, we win? Like is win. I guess like round doesn't to me convey that it's like is win is saying that one of the players wins. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? Is tie make sense? Because there's no there's no winner. It's like tie for both. But is win. We have our shape. We win. <laughs> this dot we win is also kind of funny. <laughs> but uh, to me, that conveys it a little bit better than like, oh, it's not the opponent wins. It's it's that we we win. Um, that makes sense sure. to you. <laughs> Why not? There might be another way of us rewording round, but yeah, I don't know. Good enough for now. Yeah. So looking at this, though, we have a hard-coded nine, which means we're assuming we play paper, or we play scissors and they play paper. So I think we need to go through and... Try to actually get a score here that is a different win for us to force yep. a different score. So lines, yeah, I think we just make a, let's make another one of those. So if we pay paper and they play rock, what is our score going to be? So we know from our shape class. Oh, and it's six and, and the other thing, right? Yep, six plus two. So I kind of actually even like calling that out, like we did in our bowling. Would it? Mm. I wonder if it would make sense to just test that independently too, just the win. But let's try. Let's try it out. Let's we'll try it out you, and see if it's. Do you you want to you want to test this independently to determine wins? Mm. You know what? Let's try it out one more time, and we'll see. Kind of like, is it confusing? Because then maybe we. Yeah, I, let's let's leave it in the back of our minds. Let's just go go over it go over it that way first. Yep, I'm gonna go ahead and break these down. Three plus three. Three plus three plus zero because it's a loss. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and our little IDE is going to uh, going to give us yeah. a nice helpful hint there, but we don't want it. <laughs> Thank you, ID. All right, let's fail and test. Okay, so oh, yes, there's kind of, and this is the thing where I was getting at with the maybe there's two things we're checking here. One, I wanted to just make this work, but there's two things we have to do. One, we have a hard coded return nine, and two, we need to determine the return. The we win. I'm wondering actually, can we do this first? I'm gonna I'm gonna delete this. Um or comment it out. Can we comment it out? Hey. Um so the reason why I wanted to do that was right now we win is implicitly you've done this, you've done it here, the six plus three, but we have not done it over here. So this nine actually is six or uh what this dot our shape dot score plus six, right? Mm -hmm. and that's just a refactor. So the reason why I'm doing that is I don't want to put both those, do both those things in one commit. Um, so now this is actually now rep representing more of how we kind of broke it down in the test, which kind of like, um, yeah. But we had to get a triangulation test that's on somewhat, right? So we kind of did that without a triangulation test. True. Yeah. Um, but this is a simple enough code base. It's it, those leaps are fine. It's just worth calling <laughs> out exceptions too. It's mostly um, just now I don't have two reasons to make the the red test green. So I mean, this is kind of um like triangulation is a nice way of determining what the implementation is. Since we know what the implementation is, really what we're doing here is um, removing duplication between the tests and the the production code. So the duplication is that the test is looking for the hard coded value of nine and the production value has the hard coded value of nine. Instead, we remove the hard coded value. But yeah, our triangulation, our next test will basically determine that. But I'm going to just say um, use our shape score to remove duplication in we win from tests. Right. Um, cool. 
I know I had the comment out. I don't want to push a comment. So now we're back to the failing test, and I um, am still okay doing that. So the simplest possible here would be just check for those two things, call it a win, right? If this mm-hmm. dot opponent shape is rock, and this dot r shape is paper, we're going to return true. Yay! Um, we win when upon applying this commit will um uh add win for opponent paper paper versus rock if you don't want to write that much or paper versus rock thank you. Okay. I'm liking your idea of extracting, like, if we want to make it in test, we win independently. But I I feel like if we're going to do that, we win and tie. Almost kind of feel like a, a domain, like, right? It's a, it's a, it feels almost like a strategy pattern or a, uh, like a scoring mechanism because you could change the rules, right? Like, like, mm. it feels like a rules almost like a rules class or like apply the, apply the game rules to these two and the round is holding kind of everything and scoring them. And so it it feels like to me, if we wanted to test it rather than just making it public, it it always feels weird to like, let's just make this public because we want to test it directly. It usually is screaming to me, right. That we need to extract it and, and, and think of a domain level class. And to me, it is like the, it is the logic of determining whether you win or lose. So the round to me is holding the shapes and scoring. The shape is holding it of what it is, and it's yeah. a score. So like then this is saying, how do two shapes play together? And so like that seems like round then that's doing too much, right? It's 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 holding everything and scoring, and then also and determining wins. So like if we want to extract that out, I think it would be where I'd go eventually. I know this is a simple case and we could definitely pause on that, but I just wanted to kind of bring that yeah. thought into the conversation of like, I think we win and is tie should go somewhere else. If we I want think, to. I actually think I agree that the implementation goes somewhere else and that probably makes sense. I actually don't think it's um, unreasonable to consider that a round would, would expose if, if it's a, 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 like who won with the round. Um, Cause if you think about it, you're like, Oh, Oh yeah. Who won? And then who like what's the total score for the person too? I know right now our, our public interface is really just um the score because we want that for the final final test, but I actually don't mind having um like you know, a round should know if we look at think look look at this from a domain standpoint, I think it knowing if somebody who won or if it was a tie isn't that unreasonable. But I, sure. I agree the implementation I like having your public interface class be the thinnest. You know, it really doesn't have a lot of logic in it. It's actually just dispatching to other objects. So I like, I love that idea too. Um, but then, okay, what's the small step towards that? Do we make it public? And then, to, and then by usage, we'll kind of figure out where it makes sense to abstract it or. I think we just go and we just, just like we do with shape class. Can we just make a new class with a, with a win and a with a tie, we kind of do a parallel change and refactor to it, just like we did with the shape class. Because I do agree, I, I like your notion. A round should know who wins, but I think that that just means it becomes delegation. Yeah, yeah, delegation. Um, and then we can expose it in the round when we need to if we put it in parallel. Mm-hmm. But okay. if you want to expose it and test it, then that's great too. No, no, I'm good with that. I'm just trying to think, what would it be called? Or I guess what's actually, um, you know what? Let's do it this way. Um, uh, navigate me towards the first step. What should we do first? Uh, let's write it. Do let's do a new describe block. Okay. And we'll say something, something. Yeah, applesauce. Great. And so it determines tie. Okay. Uh, 
So okay, expect uh thing new yeah or yeah new new yeah. something new applesauce that is Thai to be yeah. true. Yeah. And I okay. think applesauce would have to take in two shapes. So shape scissor, shape scissor. Or rock or whatever. Take your fancy of which one we want to. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Create class. And we're going to move it over here. And we'll put it right here. And we would have these all be in separate files, but for the sake of um, making things a little bit easier, we're going to just put them in the same file. All right, and then I just need to export this. Okay, we've got we've got applesauce, and now we don't have his tie though. Wait, I'm implementing it. Do you want to? You want to take? <laughs> yeah. Making a compile is always interesting. To determine on if when you switch with ping pong, and I'm happy to go either way. Yeah, I, I'm good with the making it compile because I think that is really the failing test here, especially when doing something new. We'll come up with better names on those. So is yep. high. And then we know we already because we have this up here. So the shape. This dot. Man, this dot. Oh, they're not private. Look at that. Yep. Yeah, and this is a good example. Like we could put the simplest possible of putting true in there. I do think and it's dot equals. However, we're we're moving logic. So putting in the we real already have the doesn't already bother have me. Yep. And I'm and, curious and, too, like looking at this, is it valuable for us to even have a constructor? And I know we don't typically like static classes, but if you can think about like, you just want to run some things through a rules engine, but I guess if you want the one copy of rules engine for the whole round, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I would say let's, let's, um let's play with it. We'll figure it out right now. We, we're in a place where things work and I think wiring yeah. it up is going to give us better feedback than, um, uh, uh, wiring it up with the real production code will give us the best feedback. Yeah. So we have this. It passes. Seems like a commit. Yep. Do you have a better name for applesauce before we commit? I don't. This is this is the thing. I'm round, <laughs> I think is what I would call it. Which is what we have above. So this is the this is the score. This is like the rule. This is the rule determinator. This is the rule. It, something about with the rules, right? Because it's the one determining who wins. Yeah. So one thing that I like doing in this case, when when you're struggling for a name, is, you know, if if this was a real system, usually you start like people talk about the system in in different ways, and in that language, there's a lot of nouns that are thrown around, and those nouns end up shaping what the domain is. In this case, we have um, from uh, we we have that sheet of like the story kind of telling us how everything works, the advent of code. I usually just like reading that and being like, "Okay, hey, what nouns are in here?" Uh, and that's usually a good way of um, figuring out how to how to program this because then if things ever change, we're all using the same ubiquitous language, um, and it makes things a lot clearer than having to like map in my programmer brain and my like human regular talking brain the different concepts so maybe we could open up the advent of code um like question sheet and see is there a good is there a none of there i mean we got round from that the winner for the round is selected and ends in a draw we have tie See, to me, this, like, I wonder if that round is selected and it tells us, again, the rules or the, the table of stuff. So to why don't, me, we, why don't like, we call it round? Why don't we call it round rules for now? I think you're, you've been using the word rules for a little bit. I Let's try that out. I, that's what's I don't think it's coming. Brain, for sure. Yeah. Let's just try it. It's better than applesauce. That's always the fun thing with naming. And that's why I like using applesauce. I think I 
Yeah, I got that from uh, Jay Bazuzzi shout out. Uh, <laughs> Jay Bazuzzi and Llewellyn Falco did a stream and um, they just refactored everything to applesauce without thinking. And that's because it's a, you know, it's a terrible name and you're looking at it and you're like, ah, I really don't want applesauce here. But then you, you know, we tried using it and then we start to get a little bit more of an idea of what it is. So it just makes things a lot easier. Cool. I'm noticing the time. I know you had a hard stop in a couple minutes. Do we want to maybe start with a failing test? Because I think Gwen is next. We Actually, can... could we... um? Maybe as a, I think we could do two things. One, let's get rid of it, the duplication first. So let's use round rules there. Just because this is a total refactor should just work. So new round rules. Pass in this dot opponent shape and this dot R shape. Dot is tie. Beautiful. There you go. Awesome. I like that because now we're actually using it. Yeah, I like that idea. Let's add a skipping a skipped test for um the win method. Determines winner. Shape dot scissors. Shape dot. Actually, we don't have shape dot scissors and paper yet. Oh, you want us to pick one that we do have? So paper. I, I wanted that just so we move logic. We're separating moving well, logic from that's... adding behavior. So it would be rock and paper, not rock and rock. I have paper rock. Oh, paper rock. Sorry. Uh, who wins? <laughs> so, what do we want? What do we want this to be? So, who wins? Yeah. So, there. This is. Yeah, I think. Hmm. That's All the weird right. thing. Like we could do like weird indexing. I honestly think we just keep the we win and like right now what we have is the first argument is our our input and the other one. I think trying to create like if we if we look at this problem, we don't have yep. to ever score theirs. I'd say let's just keep it at we win just to make things simpler. Otherwise, we're going to introduce yeah. like indexing and weird stuff like that, which the problem doesn't have. I made the we win just to make the test pass and we can actually see the failure for the right reason. Yay. And so I, I like this idea as well. So I think real quickly, and I know that we couldn't do it in red, but it's just a quick rename. But that way it's going to match with our shape and opponent shape on. Well, actually, you know, what's funny is um, this is bad about argument parameters. Look at line 21. The first argument you're passing in is opponent shape. <laughs> you put it I know. The... That's not good. So, yes, there is a problem uh, with continuing to do this. However, I think with just the, the state of the actual um, problem, doing anything more complicated is not worth it. There's a concept yep. that we like to use called Yagni. You aren't going to need it. Um, our problems have no... We There's no reason why we'd need to know if the opponent won, because the opposite of that is we lost. So I think keeping everything in uh, the language of, of whether we've won, whether we've tied, whether we've lost, makes things simpler. But love it.
Yeah, I really, um, I like this round rules. Um, I think what I like about it is we've separated the Boolean logic of who who wins, who loses, who ties, or whether we tie from the scoring. Um, so I think that's I think that's nice. Yeah, again, when we when we look at something, we're like, man, I want to make this public so we can test it independently. That to me is always, uh, well, what can we extract here? Yeah, yeah, totally. Awesome. Okay, beautiful. I think that uh, I checked in. We had the ignored test. I do think before next Sunday, maybe I'll I'll make a few new files for us because this is getting a little long, even though they're all simple. Might be helpful. I think we're done with shape. So if we just move shape out, it would it'd reduce a lot. Of if noise. you want to just do it right now, go for it. I mean, it's just F6, right? Or uh, yeah, yeah, F6. Hand, take hand shape with it. Yep. Boom. Yeah, yeah. I, I like this. Um, I like this change. And that way it just gives us a little bit of, we have round and round rules kind of together. For kind now. Of split yeah, the yeah. file in half. Yeah. And we're done here. And then we'll move round time. rules to its own file at some point too. Yep. Like it. Yeah, and I think if if you know if this wasn't streaming, we I'd be a lot more um, just just making everything its own file. I think for the sake of making it easier to navigate, like having the tests all in the same file probably makes makes sense. Cool. Yeah, there's a little bit of concession here to make sure we're not jumping eighteen different files everywhere. <laughs> but I like having I like having a billion files because when I don't need to look at shapes, I don't need to look at shapes. Get that out of here. Awesome. Well, thanks Watch everyone everybody. for joining us. Yeah. All right. We are live. We're live. Welcome to the Sugar Ray uh Sugar Ray Summer. Uh just trying to find last your time it was about when's it over. Or uh, uh I'm tired. Um uh, I just found out actually that Sugar Ray is playing nearby, and I'm actually really excited. <laughs> I want to go see Sugar Ray. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, sorry. No reason to be sorry. No. Advent. All right, code. Yeah, we're here. It's been a few weeks. Uh, Mother's Day got in the way. Yeah. That's all right. Okay. Shit happens. Yeah. Any shout outs before we get started? Uh, nope. <laughs> we don't <laughs> shout out on this channel. Sorry. Yeah. You're going to yeah. want to watch uh, something else. <laughs> That's true. All right. All we'll right. just jump in over to our discovery tree then. Let's do it. All right. So. I honestly don't remember at all what we were doing. So this is great that we have this discovery tree. <laughs> yeah. That's what happens when we, you know, put par put pause on work. Yeah. So it looks like based on our legend, we were looking at trying to score zeros for losses and six for wins. Gotcha. Oh yeah, we were doing rock, paper, scissors, advent of code. Very fun. Gotcha. Mm, my brain is coming back to me. If I remember correctly, I think we were in the middle of a refactor and we left a test. Um but I think that's accurate. The true context, yeah, is that we were trying to score basically um, if the opponent's given uh, basically a win. So if the opponent gives us scissors and we give rock, we win. So kind of um, that scoring. Yes. All right. Hopefully after we want to finish that up, it really should just be taking in strategy and kind of building in that interface. We from a bottom up design on this one. Yeah, that was it. Strategy guide. That was the that was the idea. All right. Cool. Switching over to look at code. Let's run, see if we can run our tests here. Let's see if we have that failing test. We have that ignored test. It determines when. Yay. 
it looks like we tried to refactor round rules. What's that, Mike? Yeah, we something, remember something that because we couldn't think of. Yeah, <laughs> something, something, applesauce. <laughs> I remember too. Immediately after stream, I actually thought of a better name. Oh, perfect! What is that? I don't know. It's two weeks ago, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it'll come back to us. <laughs> something, something, applesauce is starting to jog memory. To be honest. Okay. I know it well, was in Slack. I know I slacked it to you. But again, that was two weeks ago. That's too far away. I, know, I think right? let's let's actually take the experiment of let's see if your brain will um just by I found it. I found oh, it. You did round find... result. Round result was my name. Ooh, yeah, that's a great name. Round result, paper rock. And then and then we win is a Boolean. Yeah, okay. Love it. Round result. I like that because it's way more um <clears throat> it makes sense with the like the the call you make at the end. Yeah. Cool. Run the tests and let's see what see what's let's see what we got. Yeah, it was a rename, so that passed. Sure. Go ahead and do a commit. Oh wait, round. You renamed two round results. I don't even remember what it was. Sweet. Awesome. I think that's our quickest, possibly our quickest commit on this stream. Four minutes into the stream and already <laughs> committed. Yeah. All right. So we wanted to take this. Let's unignore it and run. Yes. And will it pass? The answer is actual is undefined. It's an array of undefined. That's even better. That is even better. So, oh, wait, wait. So it by definition in JavaScript, if there's nothing, it... Interesting. Okay, can we return uh, just simple as possible? Return true. You're you're in the prince. You're in the prince list. <laughs> I can't return in the prince list. Why? Why not? Yay! Okay, uh, that makes it fail. And then I think if yeah, I think I'm good if we want to do simple as possible and triangulate this, just because I know these rules will be. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, hard code. Can you win? Be recast. All right. So we didn't really talk about if we're going to ping pong or not today. Uh, do you want me to write the next failing test and we'll kick it off from there? Yeah. And actually, I'm trying to remember, can we do a little quick uh, jump up in the code? Because I feel like we already wrote all this and we were just talking about moving the logic here. Like, yeah. So I think we have the wi is the we win here. I yeah. think it looked like we moved is tie down. Um, we were talking yeah. about, and that's what we were doing. We're moving we win. And that's what I'm, what I'm getting at is I think we have tests that we might just be able to just toss over. Um, can we look on the left just for a sec and look at a... Um, I think these are our big tests that are looking at scores on whether we're. Oh yeah, and that's why we wanted to break it up because it's confusing. Okay, yeah, never mind. We can just we can just ignore it then because I think we'll have these smaller tests. And this is kind of us pinning down what behavior we even wrote in the first place. This is great. <clears throat> and I think with we have paper and we have rock, we have this. This this. Case and we did paper and scissors. Okay, so then let's let's do the um paper and scissors test, and then we can triangulate it by just put. I'll just you know we'll just put the logic in there and see what happens. Yeah. So I'm gonna do that, and that determines for paper versus scissors. I'm gonna do this differently. If I want scissors. This is our shape versus paper. And looking at round result, our shape is scissors. Their shape is paper. And I also thought about opponent shape and our shape. I wonder if this is just player one shape, player two shape, potentially, or something different. But I think we talked about that. And the main problem was um, just because all we care about right now is if we win. I think Yagni on that name just because it will we'll, we'll probably confuse ourselves more if we say player one, player two. 
I love that prettier put that dot true in the next line. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm going to extract variable there and mess it at least. Yep. Okay. So this is actually to be true uh, is passes. Passes. All right. Well, I guess, yeah, we need a losing one. So I guess you got to write a third test. Dang. <laughs> Loser for scissors versus rock. Yep. And we want this to be false. Yep. And now it should fail. All right. And I'm going to take it over. Yep. Go for it. And I I know the simplest possible. I could probably just do a little bit of magic with some of that. But I think we have logic. We were just trying to move it. Can I simply possibly just take this logic and just put it on this? Put it right here without thinking. Like all the names actually work. That which Yeah, okay. And they do pass. Something something applesauce. All right. And these tests are correct. So I think this feels pretty good. This is a pretty good commit point. So we're gonna call this um what? Move over existing we win logic onto round result. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, red green. Is there any refactorings we would like to perform before? I think moving we want to inline things? now. I think we can inline on our first we win that is tested. I like that okay. idea a lot. So it's look it a lot looks like, like it's, it's tie. Yeah. I'm just going to do the same thing. Um, huh, 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 we win. <laughs> All right. Well, that works. Oh, I'm going to commit there. Use round result, and we win on uh, what is this class called? Round. Oh, round. Oh. Okay. Any other refactors? We, I mean, we got duplication here with new round yeah. result. Do we want to do that in the constructor, maybe? I was thinking constructor or just in a method, one of the two. Constructor uh -huh. makes sense. I generally don't like adding newing up objects in other people's constructors. I wonder if we could um, just move it up as a field in general. Introduce field. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, I think actually you can just do that. Like you don't even need, it's not it ends up being in the constructor, but you don't even see it. So I mean, let's see. Does that actually work? <laughs> and we can do read only too to make it a I ooh, like the read only. Uh, I like the read only, but then it adds it on its own line. Uh okay, let's see if that if that works. It does work. Okay, so that means that these actually this is an interesting learning experience for me. That means that this gets executed after the constructor gets executed. That's kind of correct. Cool. Um, did that? No, I was not smart enough to do that, though. That's okay. I can help it there. This dot round result dot is tie. Um, commit here. Do we want to inline we win in this tie? Does it make sense to have these as two private methods? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think inline is good. Let's go look at usage then. If this dot round result that we win, yeah, that looks. I mean that. Okay, now our class is like twenty lines long. That's pretty cool. Okay, run the test. Everything's good. Um, I'm gonna commit. Um, extract round result as um. Uh, field of uh, round. Yeah, look at that. We got rid of three lines of code. That Hooray. is cool. That's what refactoring is all about. Though, if you look at the total amount, we definitely gain lines of code, but you know, we've decoupled design. We made things easier to test. So, well, cool. All right. Um, failing test next, or do we want? Is there any other refactors we see? 
we talked about briefly now that we're remembering is uh, maybe moving one of these to its own file just to help us out a little bit. Yeah, we could move round result to its own file. Um, I've been refactoring. Do you want to do you want to take over? I know. And then when we get back to ping pong, I can write the failing test after. Oh, no. let's... Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, let's just move. Which one do we want to move to its own file? I think let's leave. Um, let's move round result to its own file. It's weird that I want to do a camel case there. Must have been uh, some kind of setting. All right. Perfect. Actually, now I see something, something applesauce. Round result. <laughs> and I'm okay if we keep the tests all in one file just for the sake of um, us not having yeah. to open up 30 test files. But cool. All right. Uh... So to commit? Yeah. And result to its own file. I think nice. that's all. The other thing I think actually, if you scroll up in the test file is do we extract shape to its own describe or is it its like shape was the test at the top? No, we did not. Oh, oh, we have an inner describe. Yeah, why don't we like, let's we'll just move that out to its own describe. Okay. Maybe we put a, uh, yeah, that's fine. Actually, what's interesting, you ran the test, but I only see shape. I don't see uh, the third one. Oh, is it, oh. is that because? It is also nested. So let's oh, fix okay. that. Yeah, I'm good with it not being nested. There we go. Sweet. Okay, cool. Nice. I like that. All right. Uh, check in dash M. We uh, reorganized this drive blocks. All right, sir. I think we have to go through all our cases of win, right? Yeah, here. So I can write the next failing test, um, which I believe is going to be. And actually, I'm not going to. I'm going to uh, just dupe this test. So it determines winner. Actually, hold up. Let's put that one up by the winning test. Let's put all the winning tests by each other. Maybe just do a describe for winning tests and losing tests. And yeah, we can do that. Let me. Um, here, I'll do that. that, I'll do that way first. we can clean up the. Uh... Yeah, I like that. Well, oh, first oh. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll leave tie alone. I don't. We're not going to have more than one test for tying. So. Um, I think that means. Uh, we'll put tie like at the top. The it can can get changed to not determine winner. Just say paper for winning for paper versus rock. So just keep it at winning. Four. Or paper rock. Or I like that. Paper. Yeah, I like it too. And then uh, losing. Um, then or scissors versus rock. Okay. Okay. I think that's a nice little commit right before we get into this. So we can say introduce describe blocks to make tests easier to navigate. Right. Um, so now we wanted the next failing, easy failing test would be we write the last winning case which is going to be, we have paper. So the left one's ours. Paper, scissors. Rock. So it'd be rock for, for rock versus scissors. Uh, 
I run that. It fails. And those tests are so fast. I love it. All right. Take it over. <laughs> they don't even register a time. Do you remember? <laughs> no, it's so fast that time. Yeah. Is scissors. And this dot our take that is rock. Return true. All right. Went nice. down one font size just to see if it helped us see a little bit more info. Because now that it pushed it on another line. That's fine. Yeah. All right, and that runs tests. Add final win case to that. All right. So if we do this, if we have rock, we lose to paper. If we want rock, and paper. Yep. And that should uh 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 pass. Okay. <laughs> and We've and implemented one, losing this by just rock. only implementing winning. And paper loses to scissors, right? Yep. It is still good to I think document. Um, oh yeah, totally. Uh you put pa paper rock. Uh paper scissors. That is true. And that's fine because I showed that uh hey logic logic sound. Okay, just look at our T structure here. Round result winning for paper versus rock. For rock paper versus for rock versus scissors. Cool. Yep. And this is nice. We've taken pretty much the um this is maybe the most interesting part of the uh the problem, and we've put it all just in one little class. I guess two little classes because shape's also part of it. We wrapped that primitive. Yeah. But awesome. Okay. So now if we look at this, I think that means we have all of our things of plus six that we now the win. We have all of our things of plus three and we're leaving. But looking at this logic, is there anything to refactor and clean? This has a couple of smells to me, but there could be maybe more elegant, more clean. Could be, yeah. I'm trying to think what are what are some of your ideas? I, I had one, but then I realized it's just the same thing. But um what what are you thinking? I was thinking maybe a map. Hmm. Or a set. It's kind of what it's kind of what it is. Mm -hmm. I think I'd be down to experiment with trying a map. It's interesting because we kind of it's a map that would have um two keys, which you can do uh as long as you encapsulate how the map is accessed. Um Is it worth it though? Will it help with readability? I don't know if it actually will. Yeah, because at the end of the day, we're still going to have to access the map the same way here of saying is scissors and is rock. Well, no, I guess we I guess we wouldn't actually because we would just be putting in the opponent's shape and our shape. So this method would look simpler and then we would just have a, a again, a a map of what happens. Um, what if we described this in a method? So if I look at this, uh, yeah, yeah, trap is rock versus. Oh yeah, I like that. I think that actually does read nicer, even though it, yeah. And I'm keeping rock here specific to our I, shape because it's. I think if we win. look at compromises of like how much time it takes to do something and and readability, I think this takes five seconds to do and definitely makes uh, the actual. Paper versus rock. Yep. 
And then, so this would be returning method. Yep. Is scissors versus versus paper. Yeah, I think that's definitely like bang for the buck. Now, the thing that I think it also brings up, though, is if we read is scissors versus paper, we write is paper and is scissors. I think we should flip flop our um, the inside of those. So we're showing saying our shape first, then the opponent's shape. Yeah. I think that's, again, another quick. Not a lot of time just to clean up. I noticed that, too, but I, w I was wanting to. We win, so we is first. It's kind of the logic I used. Yep, exactly. Run test. Yep, I think this is nice. And I think this is think didn't, a... that didn't take any effort, so. Yeah. Refactor. Oh, quotes. Refactor. I'm struggling here. Um, extract. Um, um, I don't know, just extract methods to showcase winning conditions. Um, I like that. Nice. Nice. Okay. I think that cleans everything up really nice. Like we have is tie, we win. Yep. And shape is, let's reach, we can take a real Shape is very shape. clean. Um, yeah. We have the shape score map right there. So we can just ask the shape, what is its score? And then nice. our, and that was nice too. Yeah, our total score is just really trivial. Just. We asked the round result what happened. Yeah, yep. so I think if I'm we good with that. go back to our discovery tree, we think these are green. I think so, yeah. I think we can from that then get rid of the take in strategy guide as input. Get rid I don't of know what that is. Actually, is that part of the problem? That is part <laughs> of the problem. So if you remember. We're given a strategy guide of A, Y, F, B, F, C, Z. We have to yeah, so we started inside two. out. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So we, we did the day. What problem is this? This is day two. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So, so yeah, I think that's the next, that's the next thing is we basically need this interface layer. We need to write an adapter here of like taking their strategy guide and adapting it to the um, design that we made. Um, and if we All think right. about that, it's the strategy guide is, um, yeah, yeah, it's totally, you know, we just hop in there too. Yeah, no worries. I'm just trying to, I think, give us some more room because we're. Yep. So here, I'll make a couple. Uh, So I'm actually return record. I'm just gonna get rid of that. Sure. Okay, it was helpful at one point, and now we're at a different place. Okay, so taking strategy guide as input, um, and the strategy guide, the left columns, the opponents column, the right columns, our column, and we have multiple. So what if we started off with just taking one one round? <laughs> So we've taken one round first. And that way we don't have to worry about that. <clears throat> and then from one round, basically we need to map um, map columns two um shapes yes 
and they have two different keys, right? The left is one key and the right is one key. Yep, exactly. Okay. <clears throat> Bone and shape. Actually, where did it right? Yeah, basically. We we map the columns. And then, yeah, then um, map columns to constructed round. I'm going to hop over to the admin of code just to kind of look to see if we're... Okay, so they want us to return a total score of all the rounds. Okay, so I'll write that too. Take in one round. Um, let's put this at the top. <clears throat> so... Yep, total round. Or yeah, total score for all rounds. Rock and roll. Okay. So where do we want to start? I feel like mapping it to our round would be maybe the easiest. Okay. So boop, 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 boop. No, it's up over here. Now, do we have a class above rounds that would kind of do this orchestration and eventually ask the round how we win? We do not have it today, but we could. And I think maybe... Um, I think that's what we want. Yeah. Okay. Here, let's write... I'm trying to think. We can start off. This is the classic. What do we name this thing? Awesome applesauce. I don't know. Yeah, that's exactly it. We I think we call it awesome applesauce. Um. All right. So export class awesome applesauce. Okay. And I think we can start off with a test where we basically just have it take in um, uh, so awesome applesauce. Yeah. <clears throat> What's this first test? So I think the first test is we <clears throat> um, creates what creates round object. We can basically just have a check check the round object. Check the round object. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So create round object. Okay. And then we can so let's new up an apple awesome applesauce. We're gonna need a new awesome applesauce. I'm just renaming it test object just because if we rename the class name, I don't want to also rename the variable here soon and we'll figure out what it looks like. Yeah, totally. So then I think we say test object um, uh, to round. 
And then what we pass in one line of the input. So the input is um yeah, when we can do two round and then it takes in should it just take in a line or should it take in both the characters and we'll just do the I guess we gotta just have it taken have it taken the whole line. I'm have it taken the whole let's, line. Let's look at what we would be given. Yeah, we're we'll given, given like A and Y. Yeah, so let's have it take a string that contains both A and Y. And then we'll just have it deal with it for now. Yeah. Unless we want to, hey, actually, you know what? You know what? We could, yeah, we this? can do that. No, I haven't taken two two parameters. We'll have something else that does the uh, the um, what is it called? Uh, conversion you of the strings. Me. Yeah. So first parameter a, and then second parameter y. And here, then we just expect this to be equal. Or two equal, sorry. Uh, just two equal. You're fine. <clears throat> New round. And then we got to know what the strategy guy does. What what is what is A? A is rock. A is rock. Y is paper. Okay. The R. Wait, in the second. Yeah, it's opponents on the, the left y. and R is on the right. right. Yeah, so we we've done it backwards of them, which is uh, confusing, but that's fine. We can deal with it for the time being. So our shape would be shape dot paper. Paper. And they chose rock shape dot rock. Okay, and now we fail because you run and fail. Yep, doesn't even yeah. compile. Because we have no compiler. All right, you want to take over? Yeah, yeah, totally. Then boop, create method, boom, 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 boom. Return, new round. I'm even curious if uh, these will be equal to each other. Let's see. Yes. Did I do something wrong? No, I didn't. So this is where I think we have to do dot two deep. I think so. Yes, too deep equal. Because that's actually then going under um it's doing deep referential equality where it's going through every single property on the object and recursively going through everything that has an iter iterable and then actually checking in quality there. So this ends up working because both objects um have the two fields paper and rock. And then it's actually checking checking those. But I think the only thing we want to do is just change A and Y. I know we're not used yet, but maybe at least to get away from that. Maybe to not confuse us, yeah. So what? Um, uh, yeah, we can. Here, let's make a. What a opponents. Uh, shape. Yeah. Opponent input. Yeah, I like opponent input. I like opponent input. Because it's kind of it's a, it is their shape, but it's like this gross string input. Yeah, because it has to be hidden. Has to be a, you know, a secret <laughs> code. Yeah. Okay, and that passes. So I think that's a good commit. Um, I like that we change those names just for our own sanity. So um, implement basic uh, two round to start using strategy guide. Can't spell, don't care. <laughs> Blame my second grade teacher. Or blame me for not doing any homework. <laughs> you be the judge. <laughs> okay, what's the next thing? Uh, I mean, we probably need to go through all of these, right? Probably. Yeah. Do we do we have a good name for awesome applesauce? Have we gone too narrow of a of a layer of this, or do we think this is good where we're kind of because we're kind of, we're doing inside out, which means now we're kind of assuming that there's going to be some code that reads the whole file. Gets the two strings and calls this, which I think is fine. Um, you're you're cool with that? Yeah, I mean, this feels a little different because I thought we'd have this one class and the constructor would take in the whole array, um, and Got then it. and then we would just have a total. But it's going to be really hard to test drive all of that, so I don't mind these small steps. Um, yeah, that, so I think that's the thing I was looking for was we need to test this a y. What's the smallest interface? And I actually don't even think this is the smallest interface, but I think it's. Good enough, maybe. 
Mm -hmm. um, but okay, what would be the next um, test that we'd want to write if we want to continue on this this path? Uh, let's just use the second round in. So let's go back to their strategy guy here. Yeah. Um, B and X. B X. Oh yeah, I like that. Okay, so creates um, uh, two. I don't. I don't know what B and X are. Yeah. We'll, we'll make names better as we go. We learn as we go. <laughs> uh, B, I'm assuming. Well, and actually, X. I'm not going to assume anything. What is B in the... All right. Yeah. <laughs> in the second round, B is paper and X is rock. Okay. So, so paper, paper and rock. Okay. That is not going to confuse me. Uh, we yeah, run this test. Yeah, really, it feels weird for... Uh, for them to put the opponent first, but I guess it makes sense. Yeah. All right, so a failing test. Yep. Simple as possible. So if opponent input is equal to B. Yep. And here's the fun part that I think we can actually get away with. Yeah, totally. You can just get away with. We only have two tests. Totally works. Shape that rock and shape that paper. Oh, uh, shape that rock and shape that paper. I I did reverse it correctly in the. Uh... Yeah. Yes, you did. Yeah. So now it's making me wonder if we should change our moniker for this. <laughs> I mean, we can and actually reorder things. It would be actually really easy if we get to green here to do that. Hey, yeah. I'd say let's do it in a separate commit just because it's kind of big. Yep. Implement B versus X in strategy. Although it's a quite simple implementation and then 100% correct. So yeah, I think if we come in here to the constructor and hit Command F6, we can literally just say boop. Yep. And factor, and then and then do the inside. same thing in round result. And I think we're good. I think our tests. Oh, no, our tests really don't care either. We're, I think we've conveyed the intention in the tests already. That like, and hey, this is the winning test. Here. So I think yeah. it's all good. Cool. All right, now we're no longer in backwards world. We are no longer in backwards world. <laughs> we're in the tests to make sure those are good. Get you gotta run the test backwards, actually. Oh, dang it. <laughs> we factor instructors to match input of strategies. Cool. All right, so I just wanted to follow, I think, create round object three. And at least we'll follow the the strategy of getting at yeah, least yeah, the, yeah. the basics. So, and C, so and it is C. C and Z. And I'm okay. assuming it's scissors. Scissors. They played rock, paper, and now they played scissors. So they're both Z. scissors, I believe. This is a tie. Oh. I want to run all the tests. There we go. Failing test for you, sir. Okay, cool. So then... Okay. Again, doing the, the simplest possible, which is not completely correct, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to commit there. Oh, I type. I was typing way too quick. Sorry. Um, uh, simplest possible for uh, C and Z round to round. Okay. Um, so I think a potential refactor um, 
So one thing that's nice about enums in uh, it's actually kind of a double edged sword. I'm, I'm figuring out in TypeScript is that technically a string enum is a string. So we might be able to just save our brains by just instead of using B and C, we could actually just encapsulate that as a as a string enum. Um, do we like that idea just to make things a little bit easier? I know we're not getting we're not going to get a huge benefit out of it right yet, but as we you know we have. Um, as we're kind of hard coded um, tests, I think as we try to do the real triangulation, it's going to be really beneficial. It's going to save our bacon. Yeah, uh, I was leaning towards something. I was actually thinking to just do a map of our enum to the, from their B to our enum. Um, yeah, actually, that might be that might be less work. I, I'm cool I'm happy with that. To, I'm happy to do yours as well. Maybe. No, no, I think the map, yeah. Again, it's like trade-off. Like we could add the enum, but we're gonna use it in one tiny place. So I tell you try the map and then if we have a if we have a need for an enum, we can do it. So um yeah, let's do it. Um do we want I mean, I guess we have all three. The nice thing about the three test things they've given us is we're testing all three right now. Mm -hmm. I wanna steal this as a potential. Yeah. Just as a template. And then so this is maybe so opponent duplication. Yep. Opponent shape map. And so what do we have here? We have so it's A. Oh, here, a. Up. Yep. A is rock. Z. Yep. And the shape dot rock you said? Yeah, it's rock, paper, scissors. And we could do the same. Yep. And it's literally X, Y, Z is all you got to change. We should. Yeah. We work map. No. X, Y, Z. And it's it's rock, paper, scissors. And we have tests that'll tell us otherwise. <laughs> all right. So how do we use this? So I think, um, honestly, want to just, we just. To me, it's. Yeah. Just that our opponent shape map with opponent, opponent input. input. Yep. And then the same thing with the other one, and then delete all the other code. This I dot. Probably actually do this, and we'll put it down here. Yeah, just throw it down there. And then to this dot, our shape map is going to our input. Okay. And then. Should be able to delete this and TypeScript isn't happening. Now it's mad because it's like. Yeah, because like these are seen as keys. And not coming out as. Green can have a used to index type A, B, C. Um, That is weird. What if you put, if you put quotes around that, it won't work, right? Yeah, you'd have to. Yeah, Prettier got rid of it. Yeah, yeah, Prettier is going to get rid of it. If you put angle brackets around it, so like array brackets and then put it in quotes, it's stupid as it is, maybe. I think actually we just need to add a type. TypeScript just doesn't know what it is. So let, let's just add a type um, instead of doing that just because it's less work. Okay, what type do you want? So um, I'll just call it a um, input shape map. Input shape map. Uh, let's define it above. Um, interface. Uh, yeah. And it's a string. You have to say oh, the variable right. name too, which is kind of weird. So it'd be like X colon string. Or S colon string. I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, cool. And now if you scroll down, it should be shut up, maybe. No, it's still mad. So it's on the first, well, the second. Oh, because <laughs> it needs it in both places. Got it. Right. There you cool. go. Awesome. That's easy. Uh, and then run the test. Cool. Yeah. Um, I say we commit. I, I say, sorry, I can't say S's apparently. Let, I say we commit, and then let's change awesome applesauce after. Yeah. <clears throat> and then 
Well, da, 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 extract conversion of input to map. Yeah, what is awesome applesauce? Um, it's a strategy converter. That's essentially what it's doing. Yeah, it's like strategy guide to round, basically. Um, can we say strategy guide line? It's kind of a line of the strategy guide, right? Sure. Yeah. All right. There, I rename it. Boop. Stra oh, I can't spell strategy. Get strategy. Oh, I guideline. So you, you you miss all the shots you don't take. Or did I spell that wrong? Nope, spell it right. Okay, cool. Cool. Okay, and now I'm gonna just um I know we did that variable thing. So the nice thing in here is actually I'll just rename test OBJ. Are we cool with that as a variable name? Strategy guideline? Yeah. Okay. All right, sweet. And then run the test. And we're all good. All right, I'm going to commit. Rename to strategy guideline. Okay. We're one step closer. Now I think we just have to do, yeah, if we pull up the discovery tree. <clears throat> I think we've mapped columns to constructed round. Yeah, we've done opponent shape and that. Right? Yep. Just kind of did both. Made sense. So now we need to basically, like you were saying, we don't have a main method where I pass in the whole raw strategy guide and then it does the whole aggregation. Yeah. So I think let's do it. I think it wires it all up and then we can figure out the multiple rounds afterwards. So one one round first. Yeah. What are we thinking here? So I'm wondering if we just create um a a class called strategy guide. I mean that's what they're that's what they're giving us, right? So mm -hmm. start so then it's kind of like the strategy guide constructs all the lines and then uses those lines to determine all the scores. It's probably a good start. Cool. So then constructor. Before we do anything, I think we can write the old test for this, this bad boy. Strategy guide. Sweet. Scores yeah. one round. The new strategy guide. That's I created boring. a line. It was yeah. so it was so happy. It was like, oh, I know that. <laughs> That's cool. Love it. We're gonna do a variable, and this is going to be score. Yep. And now we can. So if we look at this, the first round is A and Y, right. and A and Y gives us. Eight. I'd say let's just use the literal example they have. So eight, the first one. Um, so, so we want to take in the guide constructor. Here. Should yeah. we pass in the in input? And right now it's just so it's going to be a string. The whole thing's a string. And why don't we just pass in? Um, Is it a string? If I think I don't think they've said anything. We could just make it a string if you want. We could also make it an array if we want. I guess that might be easier. I like two things. Like if a, if it's a singular array, it feels like it's potentially a two, right? So yeah, a, it should be. Y. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, let's do or, that. That's simple. Because then we don't have to do any text manipulation. Or the other option, I think, is this. And we can stick away from two dimensional arrays. All right. So the one is the opponent's play and our play, and we just match on indexes. I'm happy with either one, but those. I are feel like I like it the other way, just because if you were to actually, um, sure. I don't know. I think they're cohesive and they should stay to, stay together. So, I, as much as two dimensional arrays are annoying, I think that's right. fine. So, A and Y. Okay. Change the strategy. 
we just call it guide? Sure. Yeah. And it's a two-dimensional string array. And yep. I think we just want to say private, right? Yep. Hold on to it. And I even like private read only here. I don't think we want to change the guide at all. Nope. We should not be right. changing. Failing test. I'm gonna let you finish. All right. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm not returning anything. I was like, why are you mad? All right, we'll return eight. Passes. All right. Commit. Let me just do that just because it's... I like spaces, but when it's that simple, might as well just inline it. Or have... Get rid of the space. All right, so add... Or... um. Uh, simple test for um, first attempt at strategy guide. All right, next test. I'm just going to do the next one in the line. Again, we've done all the real work of scoring. So, um, scores. That still scores one round. Um, B, uh, B. Yeah. or BX. I'll change this one to A, Y. Oh, it should be eight. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's going to make a pass. Uh, it should be one because we lose. Take it away. Oh. So this we could just what uh return new strategy guideline. And I mean, you could just access the guide. Oh, yeah, we have it taken into two round. Hmm. Hmm. That's okay. So it would be zero, zero. And then you do zero, one is the, the second parameter. That's why I dislike two dimensional arrays. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Is there tuples in TypeScript? I mean, tuples are essentially just objects, right? I mean, so, yeah. I, I'm just wondering if there's any on, out of the box, though. That's the, then we, we don't need to do arrays, like you're saying. Yes, we can do one nice thing. Um, Cool. And that passes. Both tests pass. Cool. Yeah. And I actually think this is a quick, a good stopping point. Unless we want yeah, to write five minutes that left. third test. If we want Love to. Uh... We need to spell the guild. Guild. Guideline. Strategy. To get score. Based on strategy. Yeah, I think we wanna we wanna pause here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna cut us back to the side by side view here. Yeah, totally. And uh, I think it was good work. I think we're close to finishing up. We're testing one round at a time, just iterating over it. The next the next last step. I feel like that'll be a really nice cleanup for our next week. Yeah, I think this episode was nice or this session i should say because we've kind of like hmm, we've been doing inside out and i think what we've been just kind of instinctively going towards is like what's the next piece of behavior i have to do and what would be a simple interface so i could test that independently um that way i don't just have this ginormous test where everything under it's under test and if something breaks it you have to pull out a debugger and figure out what's going on here we've got every single line of behavior having its own isolated test, which is really nice. Yeah. Cool. All right. We'll try to catch us next week. Yeah. Thanks for joining. Yeah. Bye, everyone. I'm going to start the stream. Yes. All right. We're live. Uh, 
welcome. Yeah, welcome everyone. It's been a while, but it's been time to take up the coding thing again, and we're going to finish our rock paper scissors. I think for the for the fourth round for Advent of Code, I think is where we're starting. Yeah, we're going to knock it out of the park. Mm-hmm. It's going to be crazy. Let's jump into it. So we're veering the discovery tree. Yeah. So we see if we can remember where we were at. It looks like we were working on scoring one round and calculating all of one round. And then looking at how we take in multiple rounds would be next. Yes. If I remember correctly, um, yeah, we basically had to do some like, how do we get the big list of input and then convert it to our domain structure? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where I think taking in the multiple rounds is part of that. But let's see, yeah, code wise, if that uh, memory is correct. All right. So let's look at the code here. If we look at our tests, we had our strategy guide where we score one round of A and Y, and we get the total score of eight and one. And I believe we took these scores off of the actual advent of code results. And it looks like we kind of have this strategy guide taking in a double a double string array or two dimensional array. That is theoretically our score. First round, got it. Yes. Yep. First round is zero, and then we're taking in these. Okay, yeah, because that's what that's what the advent of code uh, problem is giving us is a a list of lists, and that's kind of yeah. At some point, we got to convert that. Yep, and I think this two round is what our conversion does, if I remember correctly. It creates a round object, yeah. So it takes in the A, Y, B, X things. So. Oh, yeah. And it's a it's text, so that's fun. We'll have to convert that, too. <laughs> I think we already have that. Yeah, we already have yeah. our maps. Oh, like it's one giant string is what I was getting at. But that's that's easy. That's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay. I mean, we're just doing, I can already see from line eight and nine that we're, you know, coupled to the first round. So sounds like that's the next, that's the next, uh, the thing to do. All right. So we want to just write a test for it. Yeah. For score a, a whole, a whole game. Yeah. And why don't, to maybe to make it simple, why don't you just copy like nine is a Y, which is eight. We could just do the same thing. And then it's, it's a A Y A Y. So it's 16. Just so we don't have to think. I think that's what you asked for. Yeah. And so I kind of want to, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's good because we don't really care about what the game is at that point in time. Yep, love it. And, and you know, I already broke the cardinal rule of we didn't run the tests. Or did <laughs> I run the tests? Because I do see it. We did run the that. tests and it failed. And then and then you just did a quick automated refactor, which I was okay with. Um, okay, so now we can... And I misspelled multiple. That's okay. If I was... <laughs> I can't spell anything. <laughs> All right. Do you want to take over? It's a failing test, man. We've yeah, got, yeah. Uh, Let's do it. Yeah. So, um, let's. So I could do as simple as possible, or I could just go and do it. So I think there's one refactor that I kind of want to do to maybe show the pattern a little bit easier, which is if I extract, I know the shortcut, extract variable to occurrences, and we'll say, um, is that a round? Yeah. Yeah, it is a round. round. Okay. Uh, at this point now, we see that, you know, how we get the round is one thing, but once you get the round, it's just the same code. So we could just do um, um, you know, let's just so do the second. H. Yeah, we could do four H, but then it's like we have the ma- we have to summate all the the values at the end. But we can do a we can just do a regular four H first, or four of I think. Uh, round 
bam, bye bye. And then here, instead of returning, we're going to say const total score equals zero. Or uh, total score plus equals, what am I doing? Um, and then this has to be a let then, sorry. Return, no, not return this, return total score. And then our okay, input but... becomes the stuck guide? Yes. I don't know why. All right, and that should work. Cool. Nice. All right. I think we can commit there real quick. So um, strategy. So I'm going to just say strat guide. <laughs> Score takes in multiple rounds. We can obviously test more than two, but honestly making it, since we knew the implementation, I, I think it was fine just going for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, what do we want to do now? Another test, one or factor. Um, to be honest, I don't like using like a for loop in this case because then we have to have this unnecessary total score scope, uh, which then, you know, the the alternative here is you could do a map reduce, um, but it's also fine. Oh. The only thing I don't like, I think, is these two lines. I don't like, I don't know why. I just, I think they're low value that we could just inline them. Um, yeah, we could do that. We could even extract a little method that, you know, given a round, score it. Just a private method? You kind of want to yeah. That? Yeah. I, I think it's, you know what? I, I think in one part, round zero doesn't make any sense that it's opponent input, but I, I agree that this, like, it doesn't need to belong in this method. Um, so yeah, why don't we extract that as a method 10 through 13? Um, hopefully it doesn't try to take total score in as a parameter and do weird, scary things. Oh, you know what? Extract variable on that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you, you missed total score though. I don't want total score, right? I, I think I just want the round because this is the method. Oh, I okay. Yeah. Yeah. I like that actually. Cool. And well, this should be around. This what? Oh, and yeah, we're having some naming problems. So this is around, and this is. I'll come up with something in a second. So we'll say. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Just to make it work. Honestly, the thing we're passing in is like a line of the strategy guide. Why don't we use that name? Because that's not the domain name. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's a nice little change. Oh, yeah, I like that a lot. And now I even inline that. Inline these Online. Two. Um. So I think in that case, the reason why I don't like inlining it is there's no way for me to know that what is opponent input and what's mm -hmm. our input. Temp, on the other hand, oh, saying... totally can be in mind. In like that, okay. Yeah, that looks good. Love that. And now I don't care about being doing a map reduce. It's totally fine. Party on. All right. So this one is uh, just extract method for clarity. You didn't push your last commit. It's all right. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that is all right with that though i think that actually completes this one i think we're scoring multiple rounds if you want to write another test we can to say that we do three and it is best two out of three technically yeah let's do that i'm fine with that I'll let you so, write scores... so i'm going to rename this test then to scores two rounds and then just very well, we'll just copy the same test and do the same thing, but mind if we do um, three one-point games just to make it different? Sure. Since we have these constants, it's totally fine. So one-point game, one-point game, one-point game, three. 
All right. Yep. Let's get that real quick. Oh, did it not do it? Oh, get. I see. I try to type too fast sometimes. Okay. Um, I think the next thing we'd have to do, I mean, we can pull up the discovery tree and take a look, but um, the actual problem statement does not give us, you know, a JavaScript array of strings. It gives us a, a text file that is new lined per round. Um, so we just kind of need to have that be the input. And it's pretty easy to, to convert a new lined array to this thing. Um, So let's let's mark that down on the yeah. So like that a at y b x c z. That's exactly what we get in a file. Well, I mean, we can we can copy and paste the text the string in. So basically, sorry, it's a string. It's one giant string where every line is is new lined, and there's um there's no space between the two. Oh, no, there is a space. So it's three characters on each line. <laughs> Just to make it more fun, you know? Can't have enough fun reading uh, serialized strings. Awesome. So I think that means we're here. I think we want to update our tree to be green here. We're not taking in multiple rounds, which is green. And now we're saying we want a new little leaf node. Oh, that did not do what I wanted to do. <laughs> of convert input into our uh, into 3D array. Yeah. Yep. Into like the strategy guide. Cool. Just given some space in case we want to actually make some more sub nodes. Yeah, totally. It's fine by me. All right. So we'll go there. Yeah. Back to code. Do you want to write the first test? Or you want me to? Because I know you just wrote a test, but it was passing well, automatically. I can write the test. Yeah. Um. Do we want to do it under? We'll make our own separate describe. Or actually, you know what? I kind of want eight point game and one point game to be completely honest. Uh, maybe we'll figure out where this lives. So it um, creates strategy guide from input because that's kind of what we're saying is this: this is the our entry point. We just want to have a different way of creating it. Mm -hmm. So why don't we have? Um, um, I don't know what interface we want, but you know what? I'm going to do something weird. Strategy guide from, so maybe a static method. Mm -hmm. I'm um, thinking what I was thinking. Okay, cool. Um, and here we can set this to a variable, the guide, and then we can just say expect guide to equal. Does it, it does, or no, deep, deep equal. It'll actually do the deep equality. New strategy guide. Um, actually, now I don't want one point game. What it's a and like X or something like that. Yeah, good enough. Oh, but it's two elements. Sorry. There we go. Okay, now we can define input. And then yeah, sorry, I was just about to make a pass. So I'm so. <laughs> Cool, and it's failing. It fails everything. That's the best test. Yeah, because it fails to compile. It's funny is because it. I guess our prettier didn't. Uh... Oh, the the uh, constructor arguments. It needs to be wrapped in another array. That's why. There we go. Sorry about that. No, you're fine. Yeah, we're gonna create method from. Uh, I really don't like the word input here. Um, yeah, I didn't know what to call it. Call it whatever you want. Guide as input. string. And I input is fine for now. Yeah, but I like guide as string. 
Yeah, guided string is the honest answer of what that is. So you know we want to say return the new strategy guide. Yep. And then I can just be uh Yeah, you can be cheeky. Nice. That passing tag. Cool. Uh commit this. Yeah, that's right. Simple hard coded case of the input in box of, no, of processing input. input we get from box. All right, so now we want to do triangulation test. Yep. So AX. I'm just going to do the same thing like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm good with that. And we should be able to say this. And I believe this is the same thing here. So we should actually be able to say a point gain. No, it is, but... X, not AY. Okay. Yeah. That, the same point, I think, just because we're directly... Like, if we hide that from the test, it gets a little confusing, I think. I'm I'm okay with this little bit of duplication because it's kind of showing the cool. Yep, and it's saying that that array does not have both of them. Sweet. All right, that's your your go. Okay, so I mean we can do this again, which I'll do for two seconds just to prove that that's what we need to do. Um, a x a x. Oh, it fails the first test now. <clears throat> exactly. Perfect. So now we can actually say um, const uh, array equals rename this real quick. Guide as string. And split on new line? Yes, yeah, split on new line. And then dot map. I'm going to say um, round as string and we want to do round as string sp split on space and then we'll see what this is because I think that's it and then WebStorm is, uh, is oh. saying it's going to be a two dimensional array right there so that makes us uh, feel decent I like this one. Expect object guide to deeply equal object guide. All right. Show me the difference. Ooh, the first split is giving us an empty. Oh, that's because there's no there's not supposed to be a space there. So actually that uh, is Yeah. I know in our brains we want we see the space there, but actually there won't be a space there. So that so that works. Um so I'm gonna commit and then maybe we can talk about if we want to refactor this. Uh, convert string into 2D array, end quote. Okay. Do we want to refactor anything? Um, what do we call the, we call it guide? Want to rename this to guide? Yeah. Just the variables are the same? Um, and I was like, we could inline that, but it would look crazy. Honestly, here, here's how crazy it looks if we inline it. Eh, yeah. I'm okay with that, actually. I'm actually okay with that because it's it's really not doing much, you know. I'm okay with that. Are you are you good with that? Yeah. The only other thing I would say is this is a static factory method. I know method order does not matter, but I feel like it should go closer because it's more cohesive to the constructor. So just put it up there. Nothing to do with it being static, in my opinion, but it's a, it's a creation method that is coupled coupled to the constructor. Yeah, so we change the constructor. We'll have to change this too. So that makes sense. Yep. So put them next to each other. All right. 
uh, move up factory method and inline. All right. I actually think I'd want to inline the two guides on those tests. I think, I think that would be okay and still readable. Inline meets. Maybe not, it's a little bit long. It's a little too off the line. Yeah. But. Cool. Yeah. Cool. I think we're done. Should we try throwing the advent of code input in there and see if it's correct? Sure. All right. There. I've got it up on this tab of my computer. Open back up pop. So here, I'm going to put it um, just because this thing's kind of gross. It's going to be very big. Um. Honestly, do you want to here? Let's, let's make a new file for this thing. It's it's very big. <laughs> nice. I'm just gonna put it in separate files. We don't have to look at it. Uh, you want file. file. Okay. Yeah, just a separate TypeScript file. Um, input uh, add advent of code input export const advent of code input. Oh, that was a fun copy. Okay. Uh, how do I make it so it doesn't do that? So it's that, but I want it wrapped in a... Actually, is it able to, to replace with template string? Join concatenated string literals? Maybe try that third one? I think that's what you want. That's totally... Yeah, I'm totally fine with that. But yeah, that, that line goes, yeah. Okay. Here, <laughs> since I wrote the, since I did the last refactor, do you want to do the last test just using that variable? Sure. Here, we can close, close it real quick. It's just going to be this, right? <laughs> it's just going to be that, yeah. So, it's strategy from, I will just say AOC, but. Yep. And we're going to see what it scores. We'll see if it's correct. So, uh, guide is equal to strategy guide dot from AOC input. And then we just want to say expect guide, guide dot dot score. Yeah. Do, do they tell us what it should be? Nope. Just put in zero and we'll see what it is. And then I'll, I'll paste its value into the website. Oh, cannot read property is rock. So Interesting. Yeah. I wonder what's going so on it there. It looks like we, we try to score, we get total score, we win, and we ask if it's rock versus scissors. And if it's rock versus scissors, we cannot okay. read is rock. Interesting. Uh, maybe pull up the input real quick. Let's see if we maybe we had a miss um, assumption or something. C C B A. Yeah, well, I'm seeing X and Z and Y. Yeah, and those are the only characters, right? Mm -hmm. Just because it's been a good billion years, can we look at um? Can we look at our shape conversion thing? Shape conversion logic? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I meant the, the test code. Uh, oh, well, it's right there. A, B, C, yeah, rock, paper, scissors, rock, paper, scissors. It's saying rock, so A and X. Um, you know what? Actually, it's probably pretty easy. Um, to figure out what line in this input is the one causing the failure. Cause we, we know it's rock. Mm -hmm. Can can you open up the uh, advent of code input again? Rock is a and X. Okay. So honestly, just. Yeah. I mean, 
delete everything but CX and see if it works and see if it has the same failure. Basically, we want to isolate like what's what's causing the issue here. So just thinking that. Yeah. Okay, so it's not that one. Um, I'm wondering if look for something with A. There's BX. So here's the first A. Yeah, let's do the first A. So let's do up to there. Nope. Okay. Actually, the nice thing is because this is a line, you can kind of just pick. You can like binary search which one's the one causing it. Um, and then we can write the smaller test we want. Yeah, maybe go yeah right there. Okay, sweet. I wonder if it's because it's ending on a new line. It's because we're ending on a new line. Oh, it's because we're ending on a new line. There you go. See, there we go. So that means we just, if this is the actual input of the inline, then does that mean that we actually need to do something here of like, just it? do filter. Uh, uh, you can actually just do, just do filter. If there's any uh, filter out empty lines. That's, I think that's more, um, like you can just do a dot filter blank line. I'm going to write a test for it first. In this, let's write the test. Uh, let me look up. I'm just going to filter empty line string. We're going to do this, and I'm going to say slash in, and we're going to broken state. I'm going to ignore that uh, strategy, the actual input while we're doing this. Yeah, yeah, totally. Hey, look, it doesn't equal. So if we click to see the difference, yeah, look at that. Look at that. It wonderful. is there. Okay, cool. Well, that's terrible. Love that. Yep. So you could just do a filter and just check if the um if it's a blank yeah, line. Just basically. Feel like it's always going to be the last one. Like this is so. Why, why okay. do you not want this? Is simple. Then go for it. Yeah. I think splice negative one is getting the first element out. I don't know. Actually, it is killing everything but the first one. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll do it that filter. Yeah, filter is easy. Just say s does not equal empty empty string. Filter out empty lines. Nice. Uh, run all of the tests. This is kind of like an input validation on line 11. But, okay, cool. So get and dot, get in, filter out. Empty. I know I'm committing an, an ignore test now, but that's okay. So I mean, yeah, it'll able... fail otherwise. <laughs> 533. Um, honestly, put that in the thing, and then I'm gonna I'm putting that in the website right now. 533. Submit. Let's see. Oh, you know what? I don't think I got the whole string. This <laughs> string looks a lot bigger. <laughs> nice. Give me one second here. It's all right. I'm going to go ahead and push the... It is freezing up on me here. Well, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if I wonder if. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, I think it was the probably the what we're using pop and the giant string. Okay, so join. All right, now let's run that test. 
And if you look too, I don't think it ended in a new line. No, it is it is the same. Okay. Interesting. I wonder if uh hold up. Cause that's this seems a lot longer than when we joined it, yeah. doesn't it? It is, yeah. It's sixteen hundred lines long, yeah. <laughs> Here, I'm just run the test. There we yeah, go. that's a lot different. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Again, the reason why we put that in a separate file was let's make it as gross as possible. Let's just leave it the way it is. Um, Where's that? Where's the... Oh, it's just click the failing test. What am I doing? There we go. That's a lot bigger. Okay. Because I put in 533 and it said it was wrong. And I was like, ah, this seems kind of weird. Okay, sweet. We have the right answer. Now we've got part two. Let me paste this into the, the mural. Yeah, we can do mural. So there's a part two. So we're saying 1384 is correct. Yeah, yeah, it's totally correct. All right, so I'm so going to check in while you do that. Yeah, yeah so... totally. Switch to. Is there a way to make this part two. background? Background color. Here we go. Let's give it like a. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah, I can read that. Okay, cool. So I'll I will narrate it. The elf finished helping with the tent and sneaks back over to you. Anyway, the the second column says how the round needs to end. X means you need to lose. Y means you need to end the round in a draw, and Z means you need to win. Good luck. The total score is still calculated in the same way, but now you need to figure out what shape to choose so the round ends as indicated. The example above now goes like this. In the first round, your opponent will choose rock A, and you need the round to end in a draw. Why? So you choose rock. Oh, this is cool. Okay. This gives you a score of 1 plus 3 equals 4. In the second round, your opponent will choose paper B, and you will choose rock, so you... So you lose X with a score 1 plus 0 equals 1. Third round, you will defeat your opponent's scissors with rock for a score of 1 plus 6 equals 7. Now that you're correctly decrypting the Ultra Top Secret Strategy Guide, you would get a total score of 12. Following the Elf's instruction for the second column, what would your total score be if everything goes exactly according to your strategy guide? So now it's... Yeah, we're, we're basically... It's the same input that we already have that giant scary thing. Um, but we're the last three symbols mean something different. Cool. Okay. This sounds like a nice little tweak. So how do we want to start this? I think we would want to hmm. I think with it being a big problem statement, why don't we slice it up to the essence of what the problem difference is, which is given like we we want a different form of round, I think. Um or like fig, without even thinking about how we hook into our or could today's logic we want to basically have the ability to give in um an opponent's input and then if we win lose or tie we want to know what that shape would be so why don't we why don't we do that first um oh oh i've got an idea for how we compose all this but let's do that first because then i think we'll we'll draw to the same conclusion So like determine determine shape. Yeah. 
And then and then wire it into our logic after. And we'll figure that part out after. It's, it's probably that, yeah. Yeah, everything else is the same. Let's like Okay. I'll mark it orange just to keep us. Yeah. Here I'll add the uh wire up into one. Oh, I like the two different lines. I think that makes it more fun. It is really interesting how that. There we go. How <laughs> um, Mural attempted to do that. You're not fun. <clears throat> okay. Let's do so it. Let's, we... The determined shape will be fun. Are we thinking this is a strategy guide thing? Honestly, we why don't we just strategy guide line? We can just figure out. Let Let's just write a global method. Before, because composition is going to be the challenging part here. How do we get it back into our logic? We, we have a lot of nice patterns, but let's just do the essence of what's different first, and then we'll figure out how to wire it in. Yeah, because it's, it's so a, com a com more of a composition problem. Determine the correct play based on. Yeah. yeah. Should is it win with Y or or is it lose with Y? I want to. So, um, yeah, let me read it again. X means you need to lose. Yeah. Y is, means you uh, need to draw, and Z means you need to win. X. So you draw with Y, you said? Yes. And you win with Z. Man, I can't do the key that I want to do. <laughs> so we're saying that uh, we're going to say comp shape to play is equal yeah. determine shape and I like the idea of doing this passing oh, it just around doing the input. okay yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can start because there. we we need we need there right because we need a or we either need that or we need a shape. It's one of the two. Yeah. E either and ways. So expect shape to play, and we want this to equal. And so a it's is rock. rock, and x we want to lose. So rock beats scissors, right? Yep. So it'd be. So we want shape dot scissors, not length scissors. <laughs> Yeah. And there you go. A failing compilable build. Oh, I don't want it there. Okay. Uh, round as array. Okay. Or it does some weirdness. I'm just going to say that. Okay, cool. Want to commit? I do know that we have two tests there that are empty, but I think it was easy to do the three cases at least to note them. So we don't have to keep going back and forth. Yeah. Uh, it makes it so we have a way to remember what's X, what's Y, and what's Z. But, okay. Um, do we want to keep just doing the loses with X first before we do draw and win? I like expanding that test. I mean, it's just, I wouldn't even make it's. I think it's all of these lose with X. So I think you could okay. just copy paste. In and that case. Because then it's just B and C, right? You're just adding I'm gonna B. I'm going to do C. that if that's okay. Yeah. So change that to B. Well, actually, we do want it. B is scissor, or B is paper, and paper loses to scissors. Oh, you're right. Scissors. No, we need to lose. We need to lose. So yeah, we need to be rock. You are right. Okay. Thinking the opposite. We lose, not they lose. Yeah. There we are. Mm -hmm. Yep. Boy. We 
need this now. I yeah, that's what I'm saying. That. Maybe maybe we, we instead start off with our input is is, is shapes. Well, but I one, guess it's like it's one shape and one one string, right? Yeah. I mean we could do that. Why don't we just make let's make the input what we want it to be? So first parameters, opponent shape. Yeah, let's make the interface we want. And then uh, honestly, no, I, I if we're gonna do that, to me it's Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Make another interface. Yeah, love it. Or enum, or map, or yeah. whatever the hell we did. It would be this. So win. Win is. Move. Yeah. Yeah. So this becomes shape dot. Rock. The test yeah, the tests are much easier to read now. Yep, love it. And then shape dot scissors replaces all buttons. Cool. Wait, scissors does not beat rock. Rock beats scissors. So this has You're to be right. Paper. So then it would be. Yeah, we can just do paper there. Yep. That's the other nice thing about this. We don't care about. Yeah. Cool. So I kind of want to comment this out just to make sure that's a, a bigger factor here. Okay. Still passes with this. Sweet. All right. So if opponent. Is rock. And forget the result is lose. We're gonna return. You want okay. to lose? This is scissors. Yep. And then, just for the sake of making the other test pass, just change that the outside return to shape rock. And that way we can at least get to green, commit, and then we can refactor to our heart's content. Um, so we'll do the plastic spec here. Yep. So if we get scissors and we want to lose, that means we need to get we need to get paper back. Cool. Uh, I think it's your turn. Yeah, that's it. So I'm just gonna do the simplest thing. Oh, yeah, just mm -hmm. that, and then return shape dot. Hell is it paper? Mm -hmm. There we go. All right. Yes, I prematurely, I guess, added the this loose block. That's okay. Finish. Um, lose. Determine shape. Yeah, I think this interface is nice. Okay. What do we want to do next? Do we refactor? Do we want to um, start doing the next block and maybe that'll make the pattern more apparent? Kind of what we want to refactor out. I see the pattern in my head that I would like, but we don't have any tests to determine it. So I think this is okay to do, uh, do a tie. Okay. Draw with tie, with Y. Um, you know, it says determine with X, draw with Y, win with Z. We're not actually even using X, Y, Z anymore. Do we want to rename these tests real quick to just uh, determine shape for loss, determine mm -hmm. shape for win?
Okay. For tie or for draw. And then. Okay. So now, yeah, just to make these basically. I don't know why I did all three. We're going to just do one first. Um, term and shape. Tie. Draw. Sorry. Um, and rock. And that would be rock. These are easy. I don't have to think about it. Yeah. That one actually. Oh, and that passes. Woohoo. <laughs> all right. Let's see how, how, how much our luck will keep uh, shaping up here. Oh, all right. Go for it. <laughs> so we were passing it in paper. Yeah. So honestly, yeah. Now why don't we do like what we want? Where our if statement that we can kind of have a little block for just result dot loss or whatever. Yeah. Requested results. Oh. Uh, yeah, I want to start with, yeah, if requested result is equal to request result dot draw. And then inside that, it's opponent shape. Yep. Is paper is the one that we just did. Is paper. Okay. Shape dot paper. No. No, 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 no. Turn opponent shape. Yep. Yep, that's pretty smart. Good call. We already triangulated it technically. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. So that's a commit. But I feel like we already know the next one's going to win. Are you? Uh... Yeah, yeah, dude, just do it. Yeah, go for it. Scissors, scissors, scissors. Awesome. Yeah. As I said, this is the fun part. And then, well, then the com composition is a little fun problem, but I think I've got a good idea once we get there. Cool. Uh, finish determine determining for uh, death. Sweet. And then Yep. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna just do the one. Yeah. Determine shape. This will be win. And with rock we want paper. Paper. Hey, you have an extra expect. Aha! Right. We didn't get that mm -hmm. one for free. We could also ex we could also ignore this and if you wanted to refactor the loss into an appropriate block as well. I I think you I like to... the idea. Let's let's uh, let's get all the code in place and then we'll refactor. Okay. In this case, so, it, it's very easy to just add above it. Can so, we? Uh, yeah. yeah. Once we get this green, I do want. I'm ready to move it because now we're scrolling between test and. What you're saying the te the production code should be in the test code? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good, that's a good call. I actually was just like uh, scroll up. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, which one is it? You know what? It, uh... We did rock, so we want okay, to win okay. with paper. Shape uh, rock. We're just gonna start off with that. Then. Shape paper, paper, paper. Oh, oh yeah, because we got to win. They give rock, and we want to win. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just commit. Win with paper. I didn't push. Uh, export. Hey. There we go. Where does this live? I don't know, right here? Yep. Oh, oh. We didn't we probably have to move the enum, too. There we go. And then we just got to do some imports. Okay. Move determine shape to a broad file. Okay. Uh, I will write the next failing test, unless there's another refactor you'd like to do. Nope. We, we said we would finish the win and then refactor. Okay. Paper's the next one, which scissors win. All right, take it over.
Mm -hmm. I actually, I'm thinking of a really cool refactor that I'm hoping we get to see here. You did stick it in the middle. Of the oh, yeah, I stuck it right in the middle. Yep. I said, uh, how about right here? <laughs> if opponent shape dot is, which one did you do? Paper? Yeah. Return shape dot scissors. Yeah, see, oh, we're, we're getting a lot of value out of our shape class right now. This is great. <laughs> yeah, we are. It's so much nicer uh, to say is scissors rather than triple equals other enum value. Win for paper. And so then we're going to do this and rock, paper, scissors. And to do scissors, we want arguments. <laughs> we want arguments. Okay. I feel like that's how you win with scissors is you just throw arguments at it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good, go, sir. Yep. Dupe is rock. No, wait. Other way around. Is scissors rock. Okay. Um, so at that point, we've finished this method. So finish implementing determine shape but yeah it's definitely dirty um what you want to refactor oh, i'd like to refactor to the bottom the if is lose uh to do another if lose to make it look a bit kind of the kind of the same so the one question i'd say is if it's not win if it's not draw then it has to be lose right so can we could we just imply that it's lose and just get rid of this we could, but I don't feel like it. I think we. I. I don't want those to live. I do kind of want them to live, but I think I'm going to extract the inner blocks into methods so that it's, it reads a little bit nicer. It's okay, the let's, I let's would be let me just let me just do what you what you ask instead of. Uh... So I think the problem is we're just going to have to return something outside. So this return as rocks going to have to live there. No, because you can just say return shape on that, right? Because they're all three return. And oh, because they're not else's probably is why. Well, because you have three ifs. And what if the request results not one of the three? That's um that's what I was saying, like we don't need one of the blocks. We could we could just have draw be the one at the bottom because it's the simplest. I like but that. I don't idea. know. Okay. So let's do that then. So I'm gonna move this into here. Yep. Um, and, and now then... I'm going to move this down. I can't run the tests in between these two steps. And now I'm just going to delete that and do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. One thing I'd like to is I'd, I think having braces here is yeah. not needed. Um, and then I actually wonder if, I know this is nip, but why don't we make it look exactly the same? Do we like that or no? Do we care? I don't think we care. Okay. Um, do you want to do extract blocks? So we can say here, <clears throat> um, restructure, uh, determine shape. Okay. Hmm. You want to extract those blocks? They're so simple. I mean, I kind of want to just because I see a 10 line long method or 12 line long method. Let's do it. Okay, if I could maybe select the right things, maybe. Uh, global, we could say um, determine shape for... Winner. Just determine win. winning shape. How about winning shape? Determine winning shape. Uh, losing shape. And then I know this is like overkill but i right now i have no clue why it says return opponent shape there drawing doesn't i i, I know this is overkill but i kind of like it because then at least we are revealing our intent here yeah 
Beautiful. Yeah, let me look at that. Win, loss, sweet. I like that a lot. So, commit. Extract smaller methods for each shape determination. After this commit, do you want to experiment with one of those ifs to see if the losing of the curly braces makes it better or worse? Oh, yeah, yeah. It probably makes it better. Here, go for it. Yeah, yeah, I've been driven. Prettier wants to make it a new line anyway. It's fine, but there's no braces, though. So you still end up saving a line. I'm good with that. I, I've done a whole turnaround on, like, do I like braces on if statements? Because really, to me, what that means is I shouldn't have... I should have the logic of what happens inside the if statement somewhere else. Um, so I actually really like not having braces on if statements because it forces me to kind of want to have one line methods like this. So this is nice. Cool. Cool. All right. So now we just need to plug it in. We need to compose it. And you said you had a cool, a cool idea and I had a cool idea and it's probably the same one. So what we're going to do is we're going to count down to five and then say our idea at the same exact time. And it's probably okay. the same idea. Ready? Five. I don't have an idea for this. I had an idea for how this method looked for. So. Oh, okay. Here's my idea for how this all works. Again, if we go up to strategy guide, strategy guide is our, um, our entry point strategy guide takes in, you know, um, a, a guide. And then what is the, what is the method at like when it actually calculates the score? Get what round. Score? Can we open up? Yeah. Can we open up get round real quick? Two round. Can we open up two round for a sec? Oh, is we have a strategy guide line class. Yeah. <clears throat> and all it's doing is constructing a round object. Yeah. So really, this is where we want to change it. This strategy guide line. Mm -hmm. um, so what I was thinking is we already have all the same logic. We could basically just wrap this, like, re like have a different implementation of this that is the left hand's the same, but the right hand calls our determined shape object. Because mm -hmm. round takes in two shapes. Um, and then everything else works the same. <clears throat> so we're thinking this round, two round, is going to change. That it would actually take in our opponent input, and then it would take in our converted result. Or actually, this R input would just be... Determined shape. Opponent shape. Yeah, but then we have to convert this string of AX... To, so this actually becomes oh yeah which we can map. have a map. <clears throat> yep this actually becomes but instead of mutating this i'm thinking why don't we create another version of this and then we can just put it in because strategy guideline basically has an interface two round you know what i mean <clears throat> mm -hmm. e even if we manually change it um instead of using something like a factory pattern or whatever or like a composition pattern um i i think at least it's very easy to show that, hey, here's how you can score it normally, or here's how you can score it with the other change. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so this is your idea, we, so I'll be typing. Yeah. Yeah, we could TD. Why don't we TDD ourselves um, a new strategy guideline? And this one, I mean, let me, I'm going to read the thing again. Um, Um, okay, so this is really stupid, but they call it the ultra top secret strategy guide. Why don't we call it ultra top secret strategy guideline? <laughs> and, that's then, so, and then, so the strategy guideline for us is just the, just secret strategy. So then we have the ultra yeah. top secret. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the secret one. Oh my God. We're going to hate this secret strategy guideline. 
but but to be fair, our domain expert, the elf, has told us that that's what, this is what it's called. Um, so I I can't argue with the product the product uh, domain expert. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do that small commit of rename. Yeah. <laughs> strategy guideline to be secret. Strategy guild line guideline. Guild line. Oh, apparently I. Oh no! Missed the up space. the space on the end. Yeah, put the space in the wrong, wrong spot. Okay, so now I think we want to say describe the ultra top secret strategy. <laughs> strategy guide. Guild, guild line. line. I really want to make a guild, apparently. Yeah, yeah. So it. I'm gonna. <clears throat> Create the, yeah, it's kind of the first test. Yeah. Like we don't need to retest our scoring. We just need to test that the rounds being created correctly. New ultra top secret. Strategy. Ultra top secret. So many words. Strategy guide line. Move that bus. I just want to create the class so that we can not have to type that ever again. <laughs> I, you know what? Put on the right too before we start scrolling. <laughs> Export. Perfect. And should we actually... Uh... Export an interface? Yeah. yeah. Guideline. Strategy guideline. Oh, baby. Never mind. We're writing the factory method. Okay. Love it. This will give us the same. Oh, it's not this. Damn it. It's implements. I'm thinking of other languages. Uh -huh. <laughs> you think the same. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you think different languages write the same? Yeah. Okay, so that's at least compilable. Uh, it is. Than... Return undefined. You just return new round. Um, I can't just return. And now that round, needs though. something. I mean, you can just put just put a a y. We need something there. Um, or shape dot rock shape dot paper. We'll start off with that. Or shape dot. Okay, yeah, that works. That works. Love it. Okay. All right. So cool. now if we actually read this test, we're saying A and Y, and Y is... So I'm pulling up this thing again. Let's start off with the losing one, and X is to lose. So can we do A and X? Yep. And can we rename the, the test to be called It Creates Losing Round Object? Just to make it very... Very clear. I was actually, I was actually thinking this. Oh yeah. Because then I can, if I do this yeah, and do it. Uh, oh, you don't like magic strings, do you? Hmm. <laughs> How dare you? So if we want to lose and we're giving it rock, we want losing would be scissors, right? I don't know what the name is. Create correct round. Fine. Create round. You have the describes the real part. So create round. Like that's fine. Um, like, I don't think yeah, we need to, to think of... We don't need... I don't think we need, uh, what, nine tests, right? Like, I think we only need three. The losing one, the winning one. Like, Determined Shapes are already testing all the the combinations for losing, winning, and draw. I feel like all we need to do is just test that each one of them... You know, it, it does the conversion or whatever. Okay. Well, you have a failing test, so... Yep. Time to implement your ultra-super-secret... Done.
Damn. You didn't finish your sentence because the, the noun is so long. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Commit. Start to implement ultra top secret strat uh, super uber cool strat <laughs> guy. <laughs> All right. I still like, even if there's only one test in the describe, if you're cool with that, like, I, I feel like we don't need three. Well, let's, let's go with don't need three for now and we'll see how we feel about it after. Yeah, totally. And change there losing input there then to uh, drawing input or draw oh. input. You did change well, it to Y, but. Probably be a good idea. All right, go for it. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful little hacky hard code. Till we start to see yep. our pattern. Okay, we're gonna say win rounds. Win input Z, and if they give us rock, we want paper. Sweet. Okay. Um, at this point, we've got triple triple triangulation, the true triangle. Um, so why don't we, I feel like we just actually implement this. I mean, we can, we can do the, we can, or yeah, I mean, like we know for now that the, uh, the end, um, I'd say, why don't we move this thing out? We want, I mean, we don't have a reason for that yet, to be honest. Okay. Never mind. Our input. Which is why I think we need yeah, to yeah, try yeah. The, the more tests, but. I'm actually happy to, I mean, yeah, if we want to share that and it'd be in a good way, we could move from interface to abstract class. Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea. I mean, I feel like abstract classes are always a bad idea, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, yeah, I, I mean, it's easy to just move the map up. I'd actually say it's less work to just move the map up and just have them both use it. So we could just do that. Move the map really up and then a like a, just a public global constant. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Um, okay. Um so it's a functional code approach. uh win round. Yeah, so at this point I feel like exposing the map is, is breaking like some some object orientedness, but that's fine. It's a it's a small example. Well it's if you think about it though, we I mean, if anything, actually, here's a better way of what I was saying is instead of exposing the map, why don't we expose the function? There's really a function here, which is get opponent shape. And it yes, internally, it's using a map and a get. But that way, then we're just exposing a function. It's not in it's not breaking any encapsulation. Um, and and that way, they can both kind of use it. Um, but again, we don't have any like like you're saying. We everything's rock, so we could just put one test maybe, and then force it to do that. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I don't know what's the next one. Let's read our map. Oh, it was B. <laughs> and then paper, we want to lose, so it's going to be rock. rock. All right. Go for it. <clears throat> <laughs> but maybe first if we make the map public so move this up is all you want yep Out and then just the change class. private with const constantinople um it, it, yeah. so just show that we still only have that Okay. Yep. And then we can and export then... function. In the global. Get opponent shape. Yep. It's a little more functional. Yep. And I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we can so just have opponent shape. Opponent shape equals get opponent shape, opponent input. We have that. Okay. And then const our shape is going to now be what? Determine shape. Determine shape, opponent shape, but, and um, our input. Well, it's a string, so we need to go. Oh, we need to make a map for. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Where's let's just let's one? Uh, it's not an input shape map, it's something else because it's going to be requested result dot x lose. is lose. It's lose draw win. They're all going to be lose. <laughs> draw. Now it's it's like reality. You just always lose no matter what happens. Yep. This dot our shape map terrible name will refactor it in a second. Our yeah, input. That's fine. Let's get a green first. Okay. And then it's probably just mad because it doesn't know what type that. Yep. But that's fine. And then we want to return opponent shape and our shape. Oh no. Um, our shape map. X colon result. I really do think it's the same thing, so I think I want to do this. Uh, input oh, request result map. Request result map and yeah. request result, and we'll give it that type. Uh, line seventy four. Thank you. No oh, spotlight. Okay, we run that. Yay! It's crazy that our test might actually be like mad if TypeScript compile fails. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder <laughs> if that's a Mocha Chai thing rather than. I think it is. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, you could do it in. So, me and Adam have been writing some stuff with Jest. And there's a way to make it work with Jest. I remember looking at that, but it just wasn't worth the effort. Um, but this works out of the box. I like Mocha Chai better as a framework anyway. Put that on the record. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't liked it in the sense of our deep equals. I think their expect failures are worse. It's like, you, like you said, we, had, we saw it today. Expect deep equal object to equal deep equal object. Like you can hit the, you can hit the comparison and it actually prints out what you want. I just don't wish you... It's an extra click I don't want to push. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're at 137 lines with a bunch of classes. I kind of want to do a lot of moving here, too. I'd like to do some. Yeah, yeah, let's do some moving. I think it's probably a good idea. Uh, so this is implement the ultra super secret with final logic. I mean, I'll do this really quickly. Just move around should be fine. 
it doesn't need anything. A bunch of those things determine around, but I don't think I care. And I like this, I like moving these strategies. So strategy, get opponent shape, map, and ultra. I like moving all of these things. Maybe even yeah, let's move the shape. strategy guidelines to their own. Uh, yep, yeah, I like that idea. And then, the, and then oh, damn, you can even move everything. request results. And <laughs> it's moving everything, isn't it? It is moving everything. So let's not. Well, no, no. Let's move everything, and then we can move it all again if we want. You know what I mean? Pick, pick a cohesive. Um. Yeah, let's just do that, and then take request result because that one is one hundred percent coupled to that, and then input the two interfaces above it. Let's start off with that. I actually think this is the interface too, isn't it? That's the strategy guide interface. Uh, no, no, the strategy guide interface oh, yeah. is not coupled the line. So yep. try moving that and see what happens. Slightly better. Yeah. There's and a I bunch do of think the one thing is, yeah. So index should have our strategy guide, which is our top level object. And then, yeah, so I think the last move here is just the determines into its own file. Yeah, I like that idea. Cool. Look at us. Maybe. So now we have index that just has our strategy guide, which is our top level object, which I like. We then have a determined shape, which I totally want to yeah, reorder. It's really just that. I want the, the name of the file function to be first. Yep. And we do like newspaper you. style, so we say determine shape, determine winning shape is the next function we run into, which would be the next function we read. Yep. I like this. And Josh cool. in. So our secret strategy guide, we have some types. This isn't super secret strategy, but that's okay. Where's the interface? And the interface definitely needs to be moved up. Yeah, this is looking slightly better. Yeah. I feel Again, like better. this is the only odd one, but yeah. Get opponent shape. Yeah. I don't know why it feels weird, but it feels weird. All right, I'm going to run tests. I did a lot of moving. All things are passing. And then round is strictly just round. Just nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. And again, if this was us actually not just like toying around with this and well, honestly, just streaming probably would have had all smaller files right to begin with. But um, especially with the test code, it just it's just going to get confusing if we have a bunch of files open all the time. Yep. Uh, so move things for organization. There's a certain level of once we have like four or five classes in a file that my brain just hurts to start determining where classes end and start. So this turned out to be, yeah. we did a lot more oriented-ness like, on this. Billions of small files, but um, for the sake of not watching us try to remember what things are called, <laughs> there's a little bit of a balance. Yes. <laughs> but cool. All right. Okay. You want a factory method? How do we want to do it? Do we just plug that in the strategy guide? And so really, I think... construct the strategy guide, we tell it which one we want to use. Yeah, yeah. Why don't we just tell it what class to use under the hood? Um, and I think before before we even make a change, we could just re we could do this as a straight up refactor because of every usage right now, of strategy guide implicitly is using the regular strategy guideline. Mm hmm. Yeah, so basically we want to get rid of that keyword there, secret strategy guide line. Um, so I think, I actually think what we can do, I think you can pass around the keyword of a class. I know that's kind of weird. Oh, you want to do like a symbol or something? Yeah, I I'm wondering if you can do that. I mean, it, it, we can also just bring the new with it. Like it's not a big deal, but it would be kind of cool if you could just pass a symbol around. Can you see if you can just extract variable on the symbol? That would be probably the easiest way. Like, yeah, does that? I'm not sure if I've done this in JavaScript before. Yeah, totally works. So because they have the same constructor argument, yep. 
kind of weird, but it's or you know, you know what? Just just take, the, just take the new. Like, we'll just pass the new in. That, I feel like that's less weird and more applicable to for people watching this. So we're basically moving. Um, you know, what guideline do we want to use as a constructor argument to our actual um strategy guide, so that we don't have to recreate everything because all the other logic is the same. Um, so I think what I actually want to do then is a field. And yeah, this... and then you can say initialize in constructor. See how it says field declaration? I think you can say constructor there. And this is the strategy guideline. And I think I just actually want to change this type to be a strategy guideline interface. Exactly. Oh, I'm renaming. I don't want to rename. And they just oh, have and I don't think I... I need to export, too. Man, I am messing up my... <laughs> That's okay. Perfect. Move this up to where it belongs. And before... And now we're newing up there. Now if you do Command-Shift-P on that yeah it'll add it as a constructor argument um i make it an optional parameter just so we don't have to update all the tests yeah i don't think that's okay with that what i wanted it to do yeah so like what you just did just changed a billion tests and now they're all broken too because using this can we uh when you do that can you select the optional parameter so you're saying this and this. Yeah. And then now we can... Like, it's, yeah, see, it's doing some weird stuff. Some we can weird... still fix it. Yeah, I just feel like I'd, it's going to be simpler if I just... Right? Private strategy guideline. Yeah. yeah. Good work. Colon... And it's a strategy guideline. Strategy guideline. And it's going to equal new secret, secret. strategy guideline. And then this can delete go away. 12 and delete that. Oh, yeah. You don't need that, that, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So that was just a straight up refactor. We were just m making it now so we can take that strategy guideline in. And now, why don't we? We can write some tests against strategy guide. Uh, maybe first a commit, just because that was a pretty, not a big move, but you know, a good refactor. Had to export some stuff. You keep saying strategy, and it makes me want to think of a, a, the actual strategy pattern. <laughs> but I know we're not actually doing that. We kind of are, but... Well, in this case, the two lines are, in a way. Yeah. They're two different complete scoring mechanisms. It's just we're... The way we're composing it's... All right, I've been driving okay. a while. I can't remember if I wrote their last family test or not. So if you want well, to... Well, you some... can... Sure, yeah, yeah, I can read the next test. Which should just work. <laughs> but yeah, we can see. So uh, I'm going to leave this test at the bottom just to make it more fun. Um, or why don't we create a describe actually here? We'll say uh, with ultra top secret uh, strategy. You just say strategy. You don't even say guideline. Just say strategy. It's ultra top secret strategy. Strategy. Okay. See. So, oh, see, I missed the strategy. There you go. <clears throat> okay. So now what we're going to do is let's copy just the first test. Scores losing round with. A is rock. A. And then X. X. And in this case, so you have to do the... Actually, you know what? Let's do... Why don't we do the examples from the... Um, so then they're saying rock and lose, so the score should be four. 
Um, I'm just looking at the discovery tree. So four. Yep. And oh, and then the other thing we need to do here is new ultra top secret strategy guideline. Three. Wait, did I read it wrong? Oh, no, the one I was just reading was draw. Sorry. Um, We'll just, just do the math. So A is rock, right? Mm-hmm. All right. In the second round, your opponent will choose paper B and you choose rock. So you lose X with a score of one plus zero equals one. So paper rock. So B. So I'm going to change that input to B. And then because we're choosing rock, which has a point of one, the score should be one. And it is. Okay. So yeah, I think we just use those examples just so and we're, we're just B reading the rock, right? B is paper. Yeah, B is paper. Yep. Okay. So I feel like yeah, I'll, re- I'll read out um, the, the thing. So then the draw example um, is rock A, and that has a score of four. So this would be Y? Yep, A, Y, and the score should be four. A, it's correct. Okay, and then the the winning round is scissors, C, and we're choosing rock, so it's seven. Hey. Okay. Cool. And we're using their exact examples. So I think that's awesome that it just all works under the hood. All right. I think we commit and then um, run this same exact code with it's the same exact input we, we use. And we'll see what the score is. Punch it in and, you know, we might be, might be done. Uh, using ultra top secret in. Strategy guide. So you want to using using secret strategy, and then using ultra top secret strategy. Yep. And I think we want to say new. Oh, and our from method does not take this in as a parameter. So you'll have to uh... do that. Yeah. Change that signature. Um, And then you want to change it so it's. We had other tests using from, so we should we probably have the one. Up. Did we not? No, we have we have five plus usages. The pro- okay. the problem is when you when you just change that, uh, all the other tests are using new ultra. So if you run the test, they're probably gonna fail. Oh, we oh. don't actually. You know what? We don't we don't care. Um, but it it is kind of, yeah. You could just manually do it. Yeah, I don't want to command Z all the way through. This is the ones we care about. Yep. And, and I think calling it out then... specifically. Yeah. Oh, you want, you like the, you like the seat. You like that one. I, I okay. think in this one instance, it's okay. Okay. Um, okay. And now so let's... we're not yep. failing here. Yeah. And that's because we need to pass in as a second argument, to strategy guide now. Which tells me I actually want this to be a variable again. Yep. Welcome back as a variable. You have one too many Quinn. There we go. Perfect. Okay, one, three, four. One, three, four, three, three. So we actually got, we did worse with our super strategy guide? <laughs> one, three, four, three, three. Okay. Yay. We've completed it. I just plugged it in. Nice. We got one gold star. Hooray! <laughs> All right, cool. That was fun. Get that dot. 
git check in dash m. So use use strategy guide guild man when using AOC input. Yep. Beautiful. So just to do a recap of everything, right? We have 40 tests. Not too bad. We knew we could do a couple more tests. We skipped a couple of triangulation if we wanted to. Um, but that's okay because mm -hmm. we have lots of test coverage. We ended up with one, two, three. You just closed round. I did. Four. Four. Five classes. Round result was also one, so six. You you kind of, I think you hit oh, like yeah. page up, page down. Yeah. So, we put, so 40 tests, six classes. Yeah. And terrible. there's a bunch of functional things that probably could have been classes, depending on how you're doing stuff. But yeah. Um, yeah. Not terrible at all. No, uh, this is, so yeah, again, uh, maybe do a little retrospective or whatever, uh, recap, like you were saying. Um, what I really like about the advent of code problems compared to, you know, like your, your, your late code style problems is there's actually a little bit of like, it's a little bit closer to maybe some of the stuff you, you do out in the wild. You know, you have a problem statement. It has maybe some domain keywords and there's usually a little bit of, you know, meat to the problem or, or, um, you know, like there's actually depth to the problem such that it makes sense to break out these small composable elements. Um, and like we kind of just did when we had the second part of this advent of code problem, we really only had to implement two additional things to make it all work. And then uh, extract something up to make it composable where we took the strategy guideline, uh, you know, as a, a second argument now to our strategy guide. Um, so what I like about if you actually are refactoring doing these problems, usually the next part's pretty easy because you're just recomposing what you already did uh, and tweaking it just a tiny bit. Um, but uh, yeah, I, yeah, I mean... I'm say, I think this was really fun and we got to play around with a lot of domain concepts and seeing how to split things out. And uh, I really do like our shape class. I think our shape class is actually MVP. The, being able to do the equals, the is scissors, is rock, is paper made everything super easy um, so that we didn't chunk up our code with a lot of this and it was all readable. So I'm, I'm going to claim shape is our MVP class for. <laughs> yeah, no, the shape class is, it's, it's funny how... Um... Cause I've definitely had, you know, people push back when trying to add methods like that. And it's just like, do you really want to see, you know, that line a billion times? And then it also comes down to like, if we change, which we did at one point, hand shape. I remember that used to be something called something else. If we change that name, then that's going to, you know, impact multiple things. So here we're really encapsulating. What does it actually mean to be a shape? Um, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think it's really cool. Um, I just like how, again, I think we, we were talking prior to starting streaming today, but I was like, yeah, we know we we still haven't finished round one or the first part of um the advent of code. But I bet when we get to the second part, it's a tiny tweak, and then we just recompose it with the the logic we already have. Uh, and that's literally what it was. We didn't have to touch any scoring for all that. Um, determine what shape is winning or losing. Um, and I think what was fun about this problem too is we did a little bit of. We did a lot of inside out TDD where we start off with kind of like a small part of the problem and then work our way up to maybe where the actual public interface is 
in this example, the public interface is that ginormous string that we put in a different file. But the, like when we started the secret strategy guideline or the, the ultra top secret strategy guide determining shape, we kind of did a, you know, a little bit of a, not really outside in, but we started off with the actual string and kind of did things. So I think it was a nice little balance of all of those. For sure. <clears throat> Yeah, I think out of all the um, little problems we've done together, this was my favorite one we've done just because it was, again, not challenging, but just had enough depth that we actually were able to like flex our design and refactoring muscles. Yeah. All right. Do we want to spend some time looking at our next problem or... What else we got going for the day? Because we have a little bit more time together, but we can also end it here since we finished the problem. I think with 20 minutes, I mean, we can look at... Yeah. We can look at some other problems. I don't know if we need to do it on stream, though. I mean, we could decide. Um, okay. But... Then I guess we'll see everyone later, and thanks for watching. Yeah. I think we're wrapping up. Um... I think maybe the only other call out was we um, are planning on switching to a bi-weekly schedule for those of you just attending Twitch. Um, so we will be streaming not the next Sunday, but the following Sunday after that. We will start a whole new problem and uh, continue on with what we're doing. Maybe we can even switch languages. I think that might kind of be fun. You like Ruby, right? <laughs> yeah, we could travel. I switch, love Ruby. languages at this point. I haven't written Ruby in a while either, so I will be basically uh, not knowing what's going on, and it'll be very Me funny. Neither. Me neither. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm I'm kind of sick of JavaScript. <laughs> There's other programming languages. Let's let's check them out. <laughs> yeah. All right. So new problem, new language next week. Yeah. Next in two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Awesome. Well, again, thanks all for watching. We'll see you all next time.